Hey, kids, do you like wrestling? Well, we like wrestling, too. We are Shake Them Ropes here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Myself and Chris Novembrino kind of doing a lazy river of wrestling criticism, going through the news and whatever happened in stateside television wrestling. And also, you know what? Sometimes we just like to watch old stuff and talk about that, too. Love for you to give us a listen. If you haven't already, we are Shake Them Ropes here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. What do you guys want to talk about? You are listening to the flagship podcast with your hosts, Joe Lanza. The lines are blurred between the living and the dead. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? And I just watch a wrestling show ever in my life. I don't want the lines blurred between the living and the dead, Rich. I just want to watch guys wrestling. Rich Krage. He's wearing it. He's wearing it. It's a button up shirt. It's blue and it's purple. And there are purple drafts all over his fucking shirt. Apologize to me right now, everybody. Rich, take that up. And we are live on the flagship podcast. I am Rich. He is Joe. Joe, what's happening? How are you? I'm doing great. You know, I uh, I was checking out the All Japan Pro Wrestling Real World Tag League finals earlier today. I know that's going to be one of the big topics that we talk about on the show today. Could be our lead wrestling topic today. All Japan Pro Wrestling. Who else? Who else? Who else leads off with All Japan Pro Wrestling? Oh, the, well, new, we may the, as well lead the Emerald off. Flow Show. The Emerald Flow Show here on the Voice Wrestling Podcast Network often does lead off with All Japan Pro Wrestling. But who else among us other than the Emerald Flow Show on the Voice Wrestling Podcast Network starts off with well, we, we, All Japan? Well, we may as well, well we may as well lead off with it based on where I'm going with this. I mean, so I I I was I turned the show on, I settle in, I rub my hands together for a little All Japan uh action on the old ajpw.tv oh i think I, I think i know where this is going yeah okay go ahead so uh i turned the show on and and it's funny i slap play you know i, I sit yeah. down i've got uh-huh. a, i've got a coke z that's so cold that it's frozen a little you know what i'm talking about where it's like it's frozen a little. Got a little so slush to like, it. Yeah. Is, was that intentional? Yeah, did you throw it in the freezer to kind of flash freeze it? Or, or did it just kind of happen? It just got caught in a corner well, of the fridge. Well, the upstairs refrigerator that I have in the den with the four TVs, all the cans, <laughs> which, by the way, is packed with about 80 Coke Z's. <laughs> just and, filled to the brim with, with Z's. Filled to the brim with Coke Z's. And then there's like one roll of water, right? So um, all the cans that are against the back wall of that fridge yeah 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 okay oh you get that you get that frothy nothing better slushy right so i'm like i can't wait i want to dig into this show so i grab myself a uh a half frozen coke z i've got uh my favorite snack on this earth in fact it might just be my favorite food i've got a little beef jerky right so beef jerky okay a, a bucky's beef jerky or, or or what are we talking here Who, who's always who, what's is that okay so back, that, that no. is your you can't go to um no you can't no what, what are the other store bought yeah know, like what are what are your yeah <laughs> I, i'm trying to remember the you know obviously not slim jims that's that's come on uh jack links i guess would be the other one that you know what, what i don't know what other ones are kind of big around here but uh I don't right. know. I just I, you. I, you, you I, got Bucky, so you have no choice. Tr- there's no reason for you to go to anything else. There's there's no absolutely yeah, no attention. reason. I, no Tillamook for Bucky's you. T- no Jack no. Links. No Slim Jims. You're you're not like L.A. Knight. You are not slapping into a Slim Jim. Um, you're just yeah, Bucky's no, all the way. Uh, so now when it comes to my salted cured meats, it's the Bucky's uh, uh, beef jerky. Uh, cherry maple is my uh, flavor of choice. Mm, okay, but uh, the uh, so anyway, I settle in and. I'm ready to watch the show, rub my great hands service. together. Great service. Great service at All Japan TV. You know what I mean? Like, never service. hard yeah. to find I, what you're looking for. You know what the show is. Every show's got, like, the main event guys are on the on, on the little image, the dates on the little image. You know it. You can find it easily. I've never, ever struggled to find what I'm trying to look for on old AGPT.TV or whatever. No. A- and AJPW.TV, more, more, yes. More historical content than people think, you know. So they put up old, old, old matches all the time. But anyway, I go to the uh, – the show from this morning, the show on December 6th, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Real World Tag Week Finals. By the way, 1,443 people. In yeah, we're going to talk that? about that. We are going to talk about that. Yes. 
How about that? And as Paul Volsh, you mentioned the Emerald Flow show, as he pointed out in one of the fucking group chats today, I don't know which one. Um, the, you compare that to the last Noah show in Cork, and that did, I believe, 875. <clears throat> I mean, All Japan, and I believe, I believe All Japan has drawn more fans um, in Cork in this year than, than, than Noah has overall. You know, they overtook them and they passed them and they just, they've, they've had a better year and it's been reflected in the results. But anyway, let, let me, let me get to my little anecdote here. So I'm all ready and I'm fired up. I've been to the, into the all Japan all year. You know that rich. Oh yeah. Yeah. You've been, you've been following the, the, the tag league the whole time too, following the junior battle yeah. of glory, ready to go. He's saying, all right, here we go. Yeah. It's big time. I turned, know, we... Big time stakes here in this, uh, this, this December 6th, all Japan pro wrestling yeah. real world tag league so, show. Yeah. I'm unspoiled. No, of I'm course, unspoiled. Yeah, you know, I stayed Nothing away. Nothing better. I'm barely... Nothing better. I'm I'm barely online as it is. I'm barely on the social media as it is. So I, I'm I'm unspoiled. I plop down on the den. I've even got it set up, all ready to go. Uh, coming out the big TV. I was gonna say I... big TV. You're not doing. You're not slumming it up with the laptop anymore. Big TV. How you doing that? What's your hookup here? No, Mitch. This isn't. This isn't night seven in Bipu. Okay, this is a big time show. So you get the you get the big TV treatment. So. I slap play on the file, and what am I greeted with? <laughs> I know exactly and where you're going. And I greeted with Nakajima and Omori holding up the trophy. <laughs> because whoever used my password, oh, who could that have been? I, unbelievable. I have no idea. Wow. Wa- watches the show. And ends at that point of all points. They see the finish. They wave their hands. They X out. Ugh. And they leave me, the person who pays for it. <laughs> To click play and get spoiled on the finish of the match. Because as you noted, all Japan Pro Wrestling.tv, they'll pick up where you left off, which is something that I don't even I still don't know if New Japan World does that, even the new one. So I of course it picks up where I leave up because the inconsiderate person who's <sighs> leeching off of my account unbelievable doesn't rewind it back to the start before they X out of my account. That I'm paying for. So, Rich Critch, why don't you tell the audience who that person was? <laughs> I would love to know. We're all trying to figure out who this guy is, Joe. I'm just trying to help you out here. Um, yeah, I think maybe, I don't know. I wonder if there's logs or something like that that you can kind of figure out, you know, who was logging in. And who wouldn't just, like, watch the end, you know what I mean? Watch the rest of the celebration, see if anybody comes out, see if anybody challenges, or rewind that thing back or something. Yeah, that, that's wild. And I'm, I, I'm very sorry that that happened to you. And, uh, again, we're all, we're, all, we're, we're all feeling for you right now. And if I figure out who it is, like, like MJF and the devil, if I figure it out, Joe, I will tell you first thing first. So uh, we'll, we'll have to uh, do an audit on, uh, on your account and see who's, who's possibly logging in there. But um, I'm going to check the IP addresses. Yeah, it's oh, great up. idea. Great idea, yeah. It's coming up Downers Grove, Illinois. So what do you think of that, pal? Oh, Listen, someone, someone, you're a monster. <laughs> Chris Sampson must be doing it. I live in. You, I do not live in Downers Grove anymore, sir. So I don't know. What... <laughs> Highland Park, Cicero. Back of the, the yards. Back of the yards in Cicero is where I live. Um, yes. Interestingly enough, I had a mystery person asking for your address this week. Oh. I'm not going to give it away. Oh. Who the mystery person was? Did you give him my address? No, because I couldn't find it. Oh, I had to direct him to someone else. But <laughs> I'm like, I know I have it somewhere, like on either one of our pieces of business or something. I, but I couldn't, I couldn't find it. Well, um, I'll just give it right here. I'll just give it. You have a pen and paper. You have the notebook. Yeah, yeah. I'll just give it right in case, now. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't want to tell you who the person was, but in case they're listening, just read it out now. So <laughs> just they, read they, it out they, right now. Yeah, squared away on that. Yeah, yeah but yeah. um, keep an eye on the mail. I think. Oh, a little surprise in there for you, but um. Yeah, listen, listen, Craig, cheap, cheap, cheapo Craig over here with the <laughs> creaky wallet. But which, by the way, can I let everybody know? Tax write off, by the way. This man doesn't even have to, like, all he has to do is put out the measly $6 a month with the conversion rate, right? And then claim it on his taxes. <laughs> it's so low at the end now. It's so low but, now at this point. But here's what he's doing he's leeching off of mine, which, I, listen, I don't even care. What I care about. Is can you please be kind? And I do need to do. I, I apologize. I'm usually pretty good about that. I don't know what got into me, and I, I and I do apologize because yeah, that that's I I, I close at a particularly terrible time too because it's literally like them getting the trophies and holding them up in the air, and I was like, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> it's like 
I I'm kid sure. you not. Like you clicked it I, and both men are lifting trophies above their heads. They're it's lifting like, trophies over their head. Right. That's what I was greeted with. Not even like the, I, the end of the pinfall and you got to be like, oh, who got the pinfall there? Who got the win there? Like it's literally the men holding a trophy. <laughs> it's so obvious who won. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sitting there with my frozen Coke Z and my beef jerky. And I'm just, I, I slapped the couch. I think I said, damn it. <laughs> damn it, great. <laughs> and said, damn it. The cat goes scurrying away because she senses the tension in the room, you know? By the way, she's she's right behind me just staring at me right oh, now. Oh, she's going to do something. She's going to fuck your world up here in a minute. I, I All the time with this cat. I've got pictures on my phone that I send to Brittany because all day long, I'll just catch the cat in a weird place staring at me. Right, ready to kill you. Yeah, the, I, I'm just convinced cats are just, just plotting your death all the time. They're figuring out what they can do to kill you or or torment you or something. It's never. It's not a good stare. There's no way it's a good just, contemplating stare. Matter of fact, I could send you one right now. But she just she just stares at me. But the cat is a sweet cat, and, and I'm her favorite human. But she just I just catch her staring at me. It's uh, it's bizarre. But um, here uh, you, you're getting a text right now. All right, let's see here. Thank God I didn't accidentally click the one next to. <laughs> I'll take that one too if you want. Um, this is what I get all day. I'll take them both. So the nudes or the the cat? Oh, I just got the cat pick. Okay. Yeah, that cat's doing something evil all day. That's look what that, I get. Look at that! Oh, look at the the things. bent in elbow and stuff. It's just staring, ready to now, do if you, something. If you enlarge, look at the smirk on her face. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a classic cat smirk right there. Look, look at that! Like just lurking around the corner, yeah, staring fucking at. Fucking scary. Yeah, dogs don't do that. <laughs> dogs, you know, <laughs> like my dog's looking. Yeah. He's sitting on a bed right now, and if I say his name, he'll look up at me. But yeah, you know, it, it's you know, never peeking around, peering around, the, leering, leering around the corner. That's what that cat's doing. It's leering right now. Now think about this. Not only did I catch her doing this, I also took out my phone, set up the the camera gimmick, got her into focus, to, and she's still didn't move. <laughs> not moving. Yeah, not not planning on moving at took all. Took the picture, right? <laughs> Just. Just totally insane. So, anyway, Krejci, if you're going to leech off my $6 AG, AJPW.TV account, can you please rewind? That's all. Be kind. Be That's kind. All I'm please asking. rewind. Be kind. Please rewind. Yeah. You know, and then to top it off, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to oh. blame you for this too, because I, quite frankly, I think you're responsible. Um, because I would have just watched the show from the start. Yeah, Festi- not- Festivus came early. I thought it was later in the month, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Go off. All right. So I go back and I'm like, well, I might as well watch this main event since I know who won. Probably cost it a quarter star, too. So when people read the notebook <laughs> they go ground back up for December, report. Yeah. and they're like, man, Joe really, you know, all the All Japan fans are sending me death threats again because I didn't. Uh, I didn't give it, you know, I gave it four and a quarter instead of four and a half. They can, again, this is your fault because um, the spoiled match obviously isn't going to do as well. So anyway, I go back and, and watch that match first. Then I attempt to rewind to get to the uh, Junior Battle of Glory final. And the random spot I pick is the winner of that match getting his hand raised by the referee. <laughs> that was, I, I, I'm, I'm not taking that one. I'm not taking no, that one. No, that's your fault. Because if, if you would have just rewound that's the true. file. That's true. You would have not. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, you're, right. you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So I got spoiled on the two most important matches on the show. Because a very, very cheap. And I mean cheap. <laughs> cheap and selfish. And, and inconsiderate man. I uh, couldn't just rewind the damn file. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Um, so anyway, what do you want to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> so what do you want to talk? Yeah, we got plenty to talk about uh, uh, here on this show. We are going to uh, discuss a little bit about MLW, the world of MLW, which we of course knows uh, never stops. Uh, the reason we're doing the show on Wednesday, people are probably wondering why you're doing this on a Wednesday. You're up against Dynamite. That seems kind of weird. Um, we're doing it because MLW one shot is tomorrow. So we got to clear our schedules. We have to make sure that we're available. Voices of wrestling.com slash fight. We're locked in MLW one shot. So we're going to talk about that pay-per-view coming up uh, tomorrow. So yeah, clearing the schedule, make sure we're available for tomorrow. Did, uh, uh, did, did fight take care of us with a code or uh, no, they never do. But uh, did, somebody, uh, somebody court, subscribes to court. fight plus Joe. So if you would like to, uh, I can, uh, I can give you that, that login info, which I believe you already have. Did, 
did Court Bauer take care of us with a coach? No, no, he hasn't. Uh, he hasn't responded to us. In a while. What was he? What was, what was what was he mad about? Even I don't, even uh, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, something happened, and you got uh, him all mad, and then he never talked to us again. So. Why are you blaming me? How do you know you didn't make him mad? Nah, it was you. It's probably me. It was you. Uh, I, I I I remember you made him mad. I just don't remember what you did to make him mad. So. We never recovered from that one. That was years ago, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. No, yeah. He hasn't He hasn't relented at all. So, it's all right. Could have been when I screamed and yelled about how is MJF still an opening match wrestler in this company uh, over and over and over. I don't know what it was. Uh, I'm but, sure. Um, I think it was you uh, questioning the uh, validity of the contracts that he signs to wrestlers. Oh, to. is that what it was? Yeah, you're right. I, I think, think he probably had a little bit of an issue with that and, and, and your interpretation of the. Uh... Didn't I ask him directly in a DM? And you he did. never answered that. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, I'm going for the hard scoops. He was so. kind of like, uh, in no uncertain terms, like, your contracts are clearly worthless, right? <laughs> or something, you know what I mean? Just something <laughs> something very blunt and obvious. You're like, they're not even worth the paper they're written on. Like, how are you beholding people to these? Or something like that. Where when you read it, you're like, yeah, Court is probably wise to just go, you know what? <laughs> Delete and fuck these guys. Yeah. I don't need them in my life. Hello, anymore, Court. So. Rob Viper was telling me. Oh, that's the end. <laughs> <Right. That's... laughs> Never talking to these guys again. Um <laughs> but uh fight doesn't send us any free stuff anymore uh anyway but uh that's okay because we can subscribe to fight plus over at voices of oh, com slash fight uh, yeah yes we can we can we can subscribe to that that's right i always forget and then i'm buying the show legally and watching it myself well i have fight plus just use my fight plus account it's okay look if you if you spoil alex kane versus matt cardona for me like i did for you that's okay oh, it'll be no, i think no. it'll be you know what honestly do that do that for me, and I think we'll, we can call it even then, right? Then we're going to be even, huh? I think we're even. So, yeah, watch Alex Kane versus Matt Cardona on, on Fight Plus, on our Fight Plus account, and then close out immediately, and then I'll watch, and I'll be spoiled, and and, and then I'll learn my le- I, I will have learned my lesson. It will be of equal annoyance to me that I now know who won Alex Kane versus Matt Cardona. From I got to tell one you, shot. much like what the White Sox are asking for for Dylan Cease, I don't think that's fair value, and – what I think what I'm going to do here is just don't expect a Christmas card this year. That's all. Oh, That's yeah. that will be uh, your comeuppance, sir. Uh, no Christmas card. Mm-hmm. Have you ever received a Christmas card from? Uh, not from you. Do you do you guys send out Christmas cards? Is that a, a thing you guys do? I I have never sent a Christmas card. I um, well I know you haven't personally licked an envelope I, and put it in there. But it, is there family? Is there a family card getting sent out? No, nah, we don't do that. Okay, I, um, good. Don't. I remember when uh. First bought the house, you know, however many years ago. I used to get about, I don't know, 25, 30 Christmas cards. Never sent one back. Then it dwindled down to about 15, 20 Christmas cards. Then it was down to about 8 to 10. Now, it took about five years, but now I don't get a single Christmas card. My own mother doesn't send me a Christmas (laughs) card because she's annoyed. (laughs) Yes. That I won't send the like people are very combative when it, you notice. They are. If you don't reciprocate, you lose them. Yeah, that, that, that very similar thing has happened to me as well, where. At one point, I was getting, you know, not meant, not like, what would you say? 20, you said you're like 25 or 30 or whatever. 25, 30. Something I was like getting that. 10, you know what I mean? What, maybe 10. Then it was five. Well, I, okay, well, listen, I've got, I got a big Italian family with 19 cousins named Marie. So right. So that would right, be the right. difference there. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Exactly. So I have a smaller family. So that's okay. But yeah, I went from 10 to five, you know, and then now it's like, one i think i think we're down to one and you know what honestly we haven't had one yet this year so we might be at zero i will i'll check in in a little bit and let you know if we're at zero but uh yeah I, you, we never reciprocate so i i'm not right, surprised right. that people uh uh do not because yeah what, what am not i i'm a not this card guy no nah, it's, it's weird guy. it's weird it's, and the stories like oh did, I, I don't know how many people you have oh, but we God, used to have people that would write, write a these, little letter yeah, yeah it's like well uh marie is lisa marie has graduated second grade i'm like all right whatever <laughs> like who cares you know great who cares about your dumb kid yeah, right um it's uh paxton has uh, graduated well, from <laughs> iowa okay cool yeah. great i'm glad paxton graduated from university of iowa in finance great cool don't care <laughs> yeah it, it the, the best ones are when uh when the when like the husband is clearly forced at like gunpoint to wear like a Christmas <laughs> sweater to match right. everybody else, you know. Right, as Z puts in the, the chat room, Marie and her husband Anthony. So yeah, Anthony's got to <laughs> yeah. put on the Christmas sweater. That's it. A lot of Marie's and Anthony's, believe me. <laughs> so um, Anthony's right. got to put on the matching Christmas sweater and sit down, you yeah. know. Yeah, amongst I a got, bunch of candy canes and stuff. <laughs> I got an Uncle Tony, who until I turned about 38 
would send me a crisp twenty dollar bill every birthday <laughs> and a birthday card. It was starting to feel guilty after a while, you know. It's like, geez, you know, it's, Tone. A, it's, like, it's your birthday, champ. Like a card, you yeah. Know, yeah. With a twenty dollar bill. <laughs> it's in got it, Barry you know? Sanders on the card. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah, a lot. Of, but uh, yeah, the other the other thing is, uh, even if you don't reciprocate. Every now and then you get a random Christmas card, and and I'll tell you who it's always from. It's from a couple that you know that just had their first baby. Yes. Oh yeah. They yeah. will. Yeah, we do send, get those. We do. Get they those. will send the Christmas card with the little five month old who has no idea what's going on. Okay. It may as well be an amoeba. Okay. These five month olds, they have no clue that all that kid wants to do is suck on a little teat and take shits in those diapers. They they don't know what's happening. But they got them all decked out in the Christmas shit. They're they're dopey, smushy faces, right? Those people always send you a Christmas card, and then of course you don't reciprocate, and that's that's the last one you get. From you're them. never getting another one. But, yeah, you're also you might get an invite to the first birthday party, but you're that's that's probably it. Yeah, you're you're done. Right, right. when you blow that off, you don't have to go to that either. You know, depending on how close you are to them. Some birthdays you can't blow off. You got to go to some of these birthdays. Um, I, that's the one thing TLB will not. She will not bend on that. Like I'll try to get out of those, you know, like the birthdays for the for the nieces and nephews. Yeah, like, yeah. She, I gotta go. I try. She, to. Like she won't. <laughs> I try to. Yeah. She'll leave me alone for everything else. She really is the best. But when it comes to these birthdays, she's like, I, you know, she's like, I don't care if it's a Reds doubleheader. Put it on. I know you can put it on that phone, you know. And then you know, I gotta go. So, um, yeah, I can't get out of those. But yeah, that's who. That's where you get the random card. If, if right, if right, you know right, right. So, so I might be. I might be due to get one or two of those this. Uh... Uh, uh, this year so yeah. i'll check but yeah so far yeah. i'm at i'm at zero and that you know what perfectly fine with me less less mail i have to throw away so <laughs> you know what i mean so not bad but uh mlw one shot we'll talk about that a little bit later nxt deadline of course we all know there is an nxt premium live event this weekend uh none of us forgot that at all uh so nxt deadline coming up this weekend we will preview that uh we'll touch on a little bit of AEW. Uh, the attendance issues that they had in Montreal. We'll talk a little bit about what, because uh, that's obviously going on as we're recording the show. Uh, so we'll discuss, you know, their issues that they had in Montreal, drawing for for Collision, and then eventually Dynamite, which I think we got the. Well, I think we'll have the final number for Dynamite. Hopefully, uh, at some point. I don't know if that's out just yet, but looks like a pretty healthy crowd. I can see on on the. Uh, 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 you know, watching it here, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that and, and, and the number, and then I'll, and check in with All In, which is doing incredibly well uh, uh, so far. Uh, so Russell Ticks has some updates about the All In uh, ticket sales. NWA, we are of course the NWA podcast, and uh, well, we got to do it. There's uh, they're adding affiliates again. This isn't completely new news. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Uh, some stuff that started in October is now continuing with a brand new affiliate signed up. Uh, for the NWA, but uh, you know, since we're the NWA podcast, we got to touch on this and talk about what it kind of means that they're starting to add uh, affiliates here. Joe, I have a Joshi match recommendation for you. You know, it is very rare that I feel confident enough to give you a Joshi match, but I think I have one uh, that you're going to love. And you know what, Joe? I know you can watch this because it's on Wrestle Universe, and I also steal your Wrestle Universe account. Um, moving on, <laughs> so, I'll try to. Do, do you nice. want me to? Do you want me to rewind that so you don't get spoiled about the? Uh, uh. The God, We Are TJPW you know. uh, match. Oh, wait. This isn't even stardom? No, no, no. Tokyo Joshi Pro. I know. I know. I know. Oh, hold on a second. Is this going to be some dainty little princess in a skirt? You know, There's a lot of skirts. Doing, medi- doing meteoras over and over. and, and uh, No meteoras. A lot of skirts. I can't. The, the lady with the tail is also there. The uh... Oh, wait. The li- hold on. The lady with the tail and the paws is in this match? Yes. Yes. All right. I'll check it out. Yeah. You know, I got it. Yeah. Um, so we'll talk about that, of course. Uh, I'll recommend that to you and discuss that match a little bit. Then we are going to check in with new, uh, Japan's New Year's shows. We have Kota Bushi coming to Noah, uh, as well as a number of other new, uh, uh, Japan shows for the New Year's. You got Freedoms, Zero One, Big Japan. New Japan has a little show called Wrestle Kingdom. All Japan for Wrestling has a lineup. So uh, touch on those shows. Uh, the the one time a year we ever watch Zero One and, and sometimes check in with Big Japan and other stuff. So we'll... Um, We'll talk about that. It's always pretty fun, but obviously the highlight of that being uh, Kota Bushi coming to Noah uh, and Noah having their big New Year's show. Uh, New Japan's World Tag League, the semifinals are sort of set. We have the A block set, uh, the B block. We're going to figure out after uh, tomorrow's show. We're recording this on uh, the 6th. Uh, they think the show on the 7th will wrap up the B blocks. We'll touch on a little bit of, of who the matchups could possibly be, some of the tiebreakers, some of the stuff like that uh, to get us to the World Tag League finals. But, uh, Joe, there is no other place to start. And uh, Gerard... The Trulio uh, says, co-host of the Emerald Flow Show podcast here on the Voice is, Wrestling Podcast is he, Network. Is he related to Finn? That pending. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 
Uh, I don't know how he knows this either, but I have no reason to believe that he would make this up. He says, quote, first time the flagship has led off with All Japan since September 2019. <laughs> I don't know. How would you know that? Would know? <laughs> I don't That's... know. But why would he not would... know that? You know what I mean? Like, why would he make that up? How would he make that up? <laughs> Is somebody tracking this? I don't know. I guess so. I, I guess there's data about us or analytics or some, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, mean, That's... I mean, he of all people would maybe keep. Tr- I, I, no, how would he keep track of that? I have no idea how he knows that, but I'm sure he does. I'm positive he's not lying about that. That's before COVID. Yeah. We haven't started off with All Japan before. That's wild. But we're going to do it here. Let's talk about it. All Japan Pro Wrestling. What was, what was, what was the topic? Yeah, what I don't know. Show, let's, let's see what the uh, – I'm going to go look to the, uh, the was that show? flagship on, archives and see what we uh, were possibly talking about in September of 2019. Let's see. Maybe yeah, He might know that, too, if we just wait long enough in the, uh, uh, the chat room. He might be able to uh, – to let us know here. Chat. They're all watching Dynamite. No, he's in the chat. He's, in the, he's, he's one of the rare ones in the chat. So we're doing okay. You know what? Honestly, Dynamite used to kill us. You know, we're, we're doing okay. Yeah, we're here. doing. We're not doing that bad. Yeah, we're not doing that bad. Um, um, I got Anthem. No, that can't be it. Now, what show? None of these shows seem like we would have started. Okay, here we go. September nineteenth, twenty nineteen. We talked about. Uh, we reviewed WWE Clash of Champions. Josh Barnett's Bloodsport Two, a match of the year contender in All Japan Pro Wrestling. And recapped New Japan's recent destruction in Bipu. <laughs> there it is, destruction in Bipu. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. So, what was that match of the year contender in September of 2019 for All Japan for Wrestling? I don't know. Pull a card up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull. Well, I got pulled a lot of cards up here. Uh, Miyahara and ne- Noamura. Uh, 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 let's see here. September third. Does that make that 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 sounds right? Triple Crown. Yeah, it looks like it was getting fives from a lot of people. So. Yeah, Kento versus uh, Nomura from uh, uh, September 3rd. Summer Explosion Series 2019. I my 2019 notebook. Yeah, get that, see if you can dig that notebook up. See if I can. It's just out of reach. Hold on. Let's see if I can find it. Great radio here, by the way. But speaking of notebooks, by the way, great time during this opening to let you know if you want to order your official The Notebook notebook you can do so at voices of wrestling.com slash flagship merch they are flying off the shelves and we've said that last week we weren't lying these things are flying off the shelves i got an email from Redbubble that said things are going to get slowed down a little bit because you are actually selling too many of these things too quickly so i am very happy to see that very good that might mean some of you guys some of your stuff might get delayed a little bit uh, getting sent to you but i think some people are already starting to get them and i know people should start getting them in the next couple of days and and and, and maybe the next week or so but uh voice the slash flagship merch is how you're gonna be able to do that get your official the notebook notebook get your official the flagship mug you can get a bunch of different stuff on there not a ton we're not doing too many shirts and a bunch of you can get they, they, they like they let me do bath mats. I'm not doing bath mats and stuff. Who wants a bath mat with a flagship logo on? Who wants an apron with a flagship logo on? Get out of here! No mugs, notebooks, stickers. Keep it basic. But that is all available at voicesofwrestling.com slash flagship merch. As the Z says in the note of chat room, the ultimate stocking stuffer. Get what is on everybody's list: an official the notebook notebook. And you know what? Throw in a flagship mug while you're there. And hey, at this point. Do a Joe Vember to remember sticker too. Why not, Joe? You got the notebook. Yeah, I have my 2019 notebook. All right, where'd you get that match? I, I want to say uh, you September, went. I, you might have went five on that thing. September third, 2019. Kento Miyahara defeats Neo Nomura. Four and three quarters. Four and three quarters. Four and three quarters. Okay. Wins. All right. That was my uh, match of the month. I only had six notebook matches in September of 2019. As I look through the archives here, um, some funny ones. How about? How about a little Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic from oh, NXT? Oh, yeah, on, yeah, 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 yeah. When they were running that back. September 25th. I forgot they ran that back in, 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 in NXT. Yeah, all right. Four stars. How about a little Hiroki Goto versus Shingo Takagi on uh, on September 22nd? Four stars. And then I had a couple couple Noah matches here. Takashi Sagara versus Marafuji on the 7th. Okay. Four stars. And Kano versus Katsuhiku Nakajima from the ninth, also four stars. The other match was uh, from the 16th. El Phantasmo and Taiji Ishimori versus Birds of Prey. Will Ospreay and Robbie Eagles. Oh, my God. Quarter. Birds of Prey. Unbelievable. What a four throwback. And a quarter. So those are the six notebook matches from uh, September 19th of uh, 
the old notebook. Say this was the notebook with Penta with the, the, the Pentagon Junior sticker on the cover. There it is. Look at that. And, uh, yeah. So there you go. Uh, well, very and, soon uh, you'll have an official The Notebook Notebook uh, as you can write all their, your, your yes, 2024 matches in. And like I said, people are starting to get them. But uh, I did get an email from Redbubble uh, that did say things might get delayed a little bit because we are unfortunately selling too many of these things. And I'm not I'm not wow. doing that a shtick like because they have these things wow. like printed every like they're not mass printing them. They're printing them as the orders come in. And the problem is we're selling a lot of them. So it's like every hour a new order is coming in and that's causing so, some problems. So things might get delayed a little bit. I think. Confidently, though, you should be able to get them before the end of the year. But you might want to order it relatively quick if you want to get it uh, breaking, before the end of the year. Bubble. Yeah, I think we are kind of breaking a little bit. I think they should use like this. we should have done a long time ago. We're morons. We're such idiots. <laughs> yeah. You want even more painful? Should have done it years ago. Story. Yeah, go I ahead. got a quick one for you. So, <laughs> I had no clue being from New Jersey, um, but I moved into this house in 2009. Apparently. When you move into a house in Brazos County, Texas, if you go down to the county clerk's office and fill out what's called a homestead exemption uh, form, basically declaring that the property in question is where you reside, as opposed to a rental property or something used for commercial purposes. If you fill out this form and simply say, yes, I live here, you get a property tax break. I didn't know this, and I've been paying extra property tax since 2009. So TLB finds out about this. I am in denial because I'm just, I'm just, I I can't believe I'm here. Right. You're you're from New Jersey. I'm from Illinois. There is no chance in fucking hell. (laughs) What is this? I'm like, what is this nonsense? Anything that we could do that. Any way so, that I could get a break on my a break on my property? No, <laughs> no, not happening. So here. what they do is they assume you don't live there when it should be the other way around. Right. Okay. First right. of all, it should be the other way around. So um, this is nonsense. I've never heard of anything like this. She goes down to the county clerk's office, fills out the paperwork, and uh, we're good for 2024. Our mortgage payment is going to plummet. I can't believe I'm paying all this money. <laughs> and. The, the, and the good news is, but Joe, the good thing is you love taxes, so it's okay. You, you're a big oh, yeah, fan I'm of taxes. I'm a big fan of taxes, <laughs> so as I, you know. Yeah, you're you're, you're one so, that that has has made it very very clear over the years uh, how much you enjoy taxes. So uh, you know what? Hey, you're 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 more than willing to pay it forward uh, and help people out a little bit. But I am currently also looking if this is possible in uh, Illinois. So go on. So a let yeah, you better leave. you never know. You better <laughs> one check. moment while you t- no. keep talking, Joe, because yeah. I uh, I'm gonna be back in a minute. So. So allegedly we're getting a refund, but they only will go back two years and give you a refund. So uh, JL will be getting a check in the mail apparently for an undisclosed amount. But um, how, how many years? I don't even want to know. 2009 yeah, till 2021. How many years? Don't even tell me how many don't, years yeah, that was. That I've been paying don't look it up. extra property tax on the Lanza estate because – I didn't know about this dopey law where you have to go down and tell them, oh, yeah, I'm living there. I'm not using it for any other. (laughs) Shouldn't it be the other way around? It looks like I might have the ability to do this as well. And I will uh, be looking at the paperwork later. So unbelievable. Who would think? I. All right. Great. Cool. Who would ever fucking think? This can't be. This can't be possible in Illinois. There's no way. I I can't believe it. When TLB told me, I thought she was like, she's like, oh, someone at work told me. I'm like, well, who was it? And I'm like, oh, that person's kind of a dope. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> right, right, right. I'm like, this can't be real because why would it not be the other way around where you would have to claim? You know what I, I mean? I like, would have to claim that I'm a rental property. I have to tell you that I'm using this for Airbnb. Right. I'm using this for a rental. I'm using this to, ma- I'm using this house to make money. So, yes, they're going to obviously. Things will change a little tax bit. Tax you okay. more. Right. But they just assume and they tax everybody more unless you trot down to the clerk's office. Of which, which I'm, the way, I'm very case. close to, so. And, and fill out the paperwork. You can't do it online, by the way. They make it as hard as possible. That's fine. That's fine. I wonder why, right? They make <laughs> it as hard as possible. Like, you have to physically be there and fill it out. You can't. There's no online form. So it, it says in my county, this is the lamest, most adult this podcast has ever been. As we're, we're qu- clicking through county law bylaws or whatever and talking about county clerk's offices the lamest show we've ever done uh it says this exemption is granted automatically i am not buying that uh so you're good the well no do you buy that the county would say ah we'll just 
make you pay less. That's okay. Oh, you don't trust them? I well, don't listen. trust that it's been granted automatically. But I will, I will talk to the assessor and or the county clerk's office and figure out what's going on here. You should do that. You should check into it because apparently I've been paying extra for 15 plus years um, or whatever it is, which is just agonizing to think about. But um, I don't know. I guess I got a nice, fat, juicy check coming in the mail and a, and a lower mortgage next year. But uh, what a mess. Do you not? Re- Someone in the chat said, <laughs> do you guys not read your newspapers, buddy? <laughs> I couldn't tell you the last time I had my fingers on a new – with apologies to Jesse Collings. Right yes, oh, apologies I, to, I, like, that industry that I wanted to be a part of and went to school to be a part of and supported as long as I possibly could. Apologies to, to anybody still making it in, the, in that game. I, I have not touched a newspaper in years. So. I haven't read a paper. And, 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 I, and I can guarantee you the last time I read a paper, it was the sports section and nothing else. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. There's not a chance. I haven't – I've lived in this state <laughs> since 2009. So I don't know what your 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 papers were they were they tabloid style or like what was the style of your because we had two in, the two main ones in Chicago you had the Chicago Sun Times and the Chicago Tribune now the Tribune would have its own pull out sections so you could flip through and pull out whatever section you wanted. How many times do you think I pull out anything but the sports? No, thumb through right, all exactly. sports, yeah. toss the other stuff off to the side, read the sports. The Sun Times, you'd flip it over, and the sports would be on the back page, and then you would go that way through the back page. Never start at the front. Immediately turn it around. Sports, boom. Yeah, it, it's sports. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like when, I'm not going. Ah, let's see what's going on. And uh, you know, and the thing is, like, yeah, arts see, and entertainment. I, let's see what's going on here. No, I, get out of here. Go away. Yeah, I used to get four newspapers. I used to get New York Daily News, New York Post. Uh, the Newark Star Ledger, which was the paper that Tony Soprano read in The Sopranos, and USA Today. Okay, I picked those all up. The Newark Star Ledger and the USA Today, like you're saying, those are the fold style. Just yeah, okay. pull the sports section right out and read the sports section, and the rest would go right in the garbage. Like, I don't have any <laughs> use it. Yeah. Then, then, then the, the wrap the other, Christmas the, ornaments in it or wrap a gift in there. <laughs> right, whatever, but, but, right but, in the garbage. Yeah, yeah, right. Right in the garbage. So then the, the the tabloid style, the post in the news. You read it backwards from the sports section. And every now and then, if you're super bored, you 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 get to, like, the entertainment section, maybe, right? But you never get to the hard news. Oh, God, no, like, no. You, not a fucking chance, you know? Um, yeah, but I've never read a paper since I moved to Texas. I moved here in 2009. I, I promise you, I haven't watched one second of local news since 2000. And I don't, I, I don't care. I don't know what's happening. I have no idea what's going on here. There could be a murder down the street for all I know. I would never know because I, I don't watch the news. I don't read the paper. I live a very isolated existence. <laughs> you got all Japan for wrestling to watch. I, yeah, you got time for that yeah, shit. I watch my wrestling. I watch my sports. I fuck around with the kids, you know, I, you know, the wife, whatever. It's like, that's all I do. And I do this show. I, I don't pay attention to anything, you know? So. So, no, um, I did not know about the homestead exemption for my newspaper. Uh, I didn't yeah, pour a glass of not. buttermilk and slap my hands together and look at the morning paper, lick my thumb, and go, all right, let's see what's going on here. Yeah. Oh, my. That's that's quite the controversy yeah. there in, uh, <laughs> in Bulgaria. Well, world events. Yeah, yeah. oh, my God, events. Bulgaria is having some problems here. All yeah. right, yeah, all right, let's see what's on here. The good thing is we can never have the wrong opinion on some important world <laughs> event. I don't know. I don't, yeah. We don't know what the fuck's going on. I have no clue. So I know. used to try and now I'm like, I, you know what? At this point, I'm powerless to change anything. So ah, listen, who needs the extra stress of caring about things? You know, <laughs> I got my own problems Just, to solve. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you know, you, you're hoping Chris Getz can turn the White Sox around. You know, uh, that's, you know what? That's no, I hope, I hope they move that fucking team. Go on Go to Nashville. Go away. That's something you could sink your teeth into. It doesn't have any consequence on anything. You know, it's stress. It's just sports. You know, that's living the land of lifestyle right there. So, um, my biggest concern is who gets snubbed on Selection Sunday. You guys can worry about everything else. But, uh, no, I exactly, no. I did not read about the homestead exemption in the newspaper. <laughs> no, you got uh, MIAC. You got MIAC games that need to be watched. So Absolutely. Absolutely. No doubt about Single it. Single cam MIAC games uh, on ESPN+. Plus. I mean, if you don't watch them, who is? You know, no one. No, one, you know? no I, literally no one <laughs> is, is exactly right. Quite literally, no one else would be watching if I wasn't watching. Um, Gotta see South Carolina State can uh, can pull it out or whatever, you know. Yeah, so I guess we should do this all Japan. Yeah, you know yeah. the reason, you know, we're stalling because we don't have much this week. Let's be honest. This was, <laughs> it's pretty light. Know, it's pretty is... light. I, I'm I, I'm kind of like uh, you know Eric Bischoff used to have the the monitor 
you know, below the announcer's table and, and giving out raw results and talking about raw and would, you know, format the show based on what was going on in raw. We're kind of doing that with dynamite. I got it on this side. They're still wrestling. The people are going to come in here in a couple of minutes. Uh, they're they're going to flutter in a little bit, but uh, you know what? No, 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 we'll, 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 we'll get to it. We are stalling a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a light week. It's a yeah, light dynamite week. dynamite wraps up in a half hour. So, um, you, you, the numbers do jump in the in the in the live chat when the dynamite wraps up. But yeah, so they'll be they'll so be right Japan, in time we'll, for ML Dub. We'll we'll get them right in time for ML Dub. So wait, when does that start? Uh, no, ML Dub is tonight. tomorrow. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. I just mean like the listeners. Well, we'll let's do all the good stuff now. Let's pack in every good thing that we have, every good take that we have. You know, we could have played it that way. And then once these played. dopes come in after watching AEW Dynamite, we'll just talk about NWA and ML Dub and. Uh, I think that's fair. I think that's probably the way. Yeah, but these but... sickos enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Did you see the chat earlier? Someone was like, finally, a show with no AEW or WWE <laughs> talk. <laughs> right. Let's go. Yeah. You know? And uh, so... unfortunately, that is why we need homestead exemptions on our houses, because unfortunately, we do not talk enough about WWE. I wish we <laughs> if we, if we could stand yeah. it. We could, uh, and we'd make a lot more money if we just reviewed Raw and SmackDown. But uh, you know what? No, that's we, we serve the people that want non-AEW, non-WWE stuff. So that's what we do. You're uh, you're sounding like a robot over there. Is that coming through? Uh, the, no, you're uh, kind of creaking a little bit on my end. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Uh, what the hell's happening here? I don't know. You got a little bit of... You got a little Dave Meltzer buzz going on over by you. So, all right, I think we are back. So we'll uh, we'll fade that uh, that Cisco hold music out. Okay, Joe, we're back. We're good. I think we got our tech thing solved for now. Hopefully, is hold it on. really Cisco? What song is it? Not no. You always get excited about the actual Cisco. It's not the actual Cisco. It, it is the hold music that is used for Cisco phone songs like when, when you're uh or when, when you call a uh, an insurance company and they use a cisco phone service and they put you on hold you hear that music it is not it's not the thong song or any drew hill hit or anything like that so don't get excited i, I know you always do it's not the album unleash the dragon it is not a, it's no. nothing from unleash the dragon uh this is all no cisco with a q here no cisco with a q this is c-i-s-c-o as opposed to uh s-i-s-q Oh, with the little tilde on it or whatever. I think he had the tilde, right? I don't know. Did he have the tilde? I think he did. I believe Cisco did. So, Well, that's disappointing, and I do think I ask about that every time. You do. And you know what? Maybe I should – you know, one time I should surprise you. You say, yeah, yeah, that's the thong. And then it is. And it is the thong song that we're playing during the song. Yeah. Unless you have another hit that you would like me to uh, to play from Cisco. I know you're I know you a big Cisco oh, slash so <laughs> Unleash so the Dragon fan. So uh, uh, if you have another song that you would like me to play other than the Thong song, please please just request that. And next time I will I'll make sure I do that. For Definitely you. not Googling right now to come up with another <laughs> one. That's you're not another, uh, yeah. another Cisco. Right, so. uh, maybe, maybe a Drew Hill song. But all right. Yeah, we're, we're back. Better than ever. What? You want to read the ad, or you want to do the All Japan segment? Yeah, you know what? Let's ad. do the All Japan segment. Let's let's let's. Right, we've been so. we've been promising people this All Japan, so let's fucking get to it. All Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, an eventful night in Cork and Hall for All Japan, uh, spoiled by me <laughs> to Joe. So I apologize for that. But uh, we had the finals of the Junior Battle for Glory. Dan Tamura defeating on uh, Rookie Doi to win. Oh, the, what? Junior Battle of Glory. I said Battle of Glory. For Glory. I said you of. Said the- no. You said junior battle for glory. No, read the tape. Run the tape back. Throw Run the flag. tape back. Throw the flag. <laughs> Challenge. You, I'm doing that. You, you don't watch much basketball these days, but the guys do. I don't know. They might do it in football too. Do they like do like a little, you know, around their head? They'll they'll they'll, they'll put a finger up and kind of spin it, as in like run that back, run that back, run that back. I don't know if that's. Do, do you guys do that in the NFL too? If they think something's going to no, challenge, or like do the players get involved people. in challenges that much in the NFL? I guess I, I'm asking that more than anything. Uh, yeah, the, the coaches have the red challenge flag. Right, right. But do they get encouraged by their players to run? To, oh, to... you mean when the players think it should be right? Because right. like in the NBA, yeah, it'll yeah. be like somebody will get called for a reach and foul like a minute into the game, and they're like, "Run it back, run it back." The coach yeah, yeah, is, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It's, right. a, it's three to one. <laughs> We're a minute, and I'm not running the. I'm not running the, the challenge now on because you got a reach and foul call in the second quarter. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. Chill out, brother. Yeah, got to save those. Yeah. Um. And Paul anyway, says so I said you four, got... so you know what? Screw you, Paul. What, what, what do you know? I told so... you said four. You said four. I told you. Anyway. Junior battle of glory finals. Dan Tamora defeating Naruki Doi. Rich, what was your best, what was your favorite junior battle of glory match this year? Uh, I'll be honest. I, I missed most of the tournament this year. 
I apologize, but uh, I, I usually that's enjoy that tournament a little good. bit. But I, I, I was I was kind of locked in more on the real world tag league type Nobody stuff. Nobody enjoys that tournament. Stop it. Um, <laughs> it's it's so it's I the think same what, six guys every year. Yeah, Nobody enjoys. This yeah, I, I wish it was larger. I, I guess this year, you know, you know, I won't I won't lie. There was Abe was in there, so I watched a, f- a few Abe matches, and I watched a few Naruki Doi matches because at least those guys threw it off a little bit and made it a little bit different. But uh, uh, Hiroki uh, Haruku Sato was in there, so you know I immediately skipped all those. And uh, yeah, no, I, I didn't watch too much of the Junior Battle of Glory. Now that I'm looking at it, good. I just wanted to turn to turn to to screw a little because you really uh, you really ruined this show for me. But um, <laughs> the Real World Tag League, uh, it came down to well, look. There were five matches on the show. The first match, both teams were eliminated. So we had uh, FKA Jiro. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, whatever this new name Kurushiro. is, I'm not calling it. That name is ridiculous. I'm going to call him Jiro. Yeah, him and uh, Tachibana against Hideki Okatani and Yukio Sakaguchi. They defeated them, and both those teams finished with eight. But you needed ten to be in the mix. Right, so they were So out. they were both out. And then Bulk Orchestra beat cyrus and ryan davidson they were both at eight that put bulk orchestra at 10 which meant there was the possibility of well no that they were out you know if you had 10 you were out too because omori and nakajima came into the final with 10 and miyahara and aoyagi came in with nine so someone had to finish with 11 at minimum so those teams were eliminated too before they even got in the ring so the final three matches all had teams that were still in the mix. So Hideki Suzuki and Suwama came into their match with 10. So they were in the mix because they had a chance to finish with 12. But, you know, as you figured, this is where we got the series of upsets to start eliminating teams. And Suji Ishikawa and Rena Yabe uh, knocked out Suzuki and Suwama with the big upset. They only finished with six points, but with Suzuki and Suwama uh, losing, they were at that point eliminated. And then the semifinal, it was the same kind of deal. The semifinal of the show, not this. There was no semifinal in the tournament. So it was just there's no right. There was no there was final, final either. It just kind of it, it, it worked out points. perfectly. Gosh darn it! Won't you yeah. believe it that the main event was the the decider right. of the tournament? But yeah, yeah. So the Sayados came in with ten, and Ryuki Honda and Yuma Anzai came in with seven. And again, the Sayados needed to win to have any chance. And of course, you know, wouldn't you know it? Another upset. And uh, Honda and Anzai win to finish with nine and knock out the Saitos. So then we've got our final, which is Nakajima and Omori coming in with 10 points. Miyahara and Aoyagi coming in with nine. So again, uh, you know, you had to have one team finish with at least 11 here. So all of the teams with 10 points uh, were now eliminated at this point. But it was Omori and Nakajima winning the match and going up to 12 and winning the tournament outright with uh, Miyahara and Aoyagi at nine actually finishing tied with Honda and Anzai. If you want to look at standings behind three other teams. So the Saito Suzuki and Suwama and bulk orchestra all finished ahead of Miyahara and Aoyagi. So they finished technically what tied for fifth tied for fifth. Yeah. With Honda and Anzai when it was all said and done. So that's how the night played out. And as far as the final match goes, it was a great match. And, and the thing about it was, it, 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 it was really, it was a chance to get Nakajima and Miyahara in the ring together again. And when those two guys are in the ring, it is just, it feels different. It's electric when Nakajima and Miyahara are in there and they're going to have another match coming up. And I'm sure it's going to be just as great as the first one, maybe even better. And the other story of the match was Hokuto Omori and giving him a huge win on a huge stage, okay, because he pinned Aoyagi to win the match and to win the tournament for him and Nakajima, and this is another guy who, because of the big crowd, they had almost 1,500 people there in Cork and Hall, and because and the crowd was hot, and because of the stakes, this being the real world, the real world tag league final, uh, the same tournament lineage of all those great All Japan tag tournaments in the 90s, and and here's Hokuto Omori scoring the pinfall in the final over a former triple crown champ in a match with three stars. And he scores the fall, the emotion after he scored the fall. And this was really, who knows what will happen, but this was another opportunity where that they saw to try to elevate somebody. 
And now I'm sure he will be involved in some big matches as we move forward with their New Year's Eve show and then the, the, the shows they're having, um, you know, uh, after the turn of the calendar when everybody has those big shows early on in the year. So it's just another nice piece of booking, you know, and it, it's you look at the year that All Japan had. And by the end of the year, it's it's about the Yuma Aoyagis and the Hokuto Omoris and the Saitos who have been Yuma elevated Anzai. to a new... Yeah, Yuma Anzai, absolutely. He Even feels a, a like, Ryuki you know, and, and he was a guy that felt like everything was on this guy. This has got to be our guy. Like two years ago or a year or so ago, it was like, this has to be our guy. And now he feels like, and, and I'm not putting this, I'm not saying that in a way to put this down or to say that they're not doing a good job with them because I th- still think they are. But now he doesn't feel as important. And I think that's good. I think it's good that he's like the third or fourth new guy that they've kind of For quote sure. unquote made in the last because yeah now it, it's no longer oh my god if this guy doesn't get it then we're done and we're all, you know, and it's fucking fucked. we got nothing yeah. you know it's like oh we got Yuma Anzai and if for some reason he doesn't work which there's no reason he wouldn't work but if something happens he gets hurt or whatever that's okay because we have Yuma Aoyagi now that we've elevated to a certain point we have Omori that we've elevated to a certain point we have the Saitos who are literally you know I have quite literally you know by by being absolute shitbags and, and dropping the 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 pretense that they were going to be stars have become stars in a way it's so weird that like just by by yeah. making them not quote unquote stars because there was this whole attempt oh these are these clean cut you know these guys they come from this sumo world and this and they, and they just said you know what? let's make them dirtbag shit bags and they're great <laughs> and now they're becoming stars because of that so it is it, it's kind of uh, embarrassment of riches is probably not the right way to put it because it's still all japan pro wrestling and it's still you know obviously a company that, that's rebuilding in a lot of ways but man when you look at where they were two years ago and how important one or two particular guys were to the company, and now it's not that case. Like you said, there's five to six guys right now, and if Nakajima hangs around, you're going to add him to that as well. I'm, always, I'm I'm a little apprehensive about adding him into any future uh, mix with, with with them so far, but because who knows? We'll and, see. Yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see about him. But you know, you add him, and it's like right. holy crap. There's yet another one there. If that's the case, but even even without Miyahara, I think that there's enough guys there that have kind of elevated and taken that next step up. That yeah, it, it, it's things are looking good, and it's being reflected in the crowds. It's being reflected in how hot the crowds are because they've had a run. Uh, the last you know four or five All Japan shows I've watched have had molten hot crowds, and this one was as hot as a Corican is going to be for this match, and 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 especially the young guys getting the big wins and, and, and the big confrontations between the young guys it was one of those things where the guys would tag in and immediately they would get a pop. You know what I mean? And the guy, you know, what, it, it felt like classic all Japan in a lot of ways. Miyahara would, would, would tag Aoyagi and the crowd would go, yeah, you know what I mean? And then, you know, Nakajima would tag in a, a, a more and the crowd would go, yeah, and like, it, you know what I mean? Like it was like, they were excited about tags. They were excited that they were just seeing this match. And that's, you know, man, Compare that to a couple years ago where All Japan felt like it was a fucking funeral when you were watching it. I think I even came on the show and said, I'm not watching All Japan anymore because it's so fucking boring because it's just the the matches were mostly okay and the action was okay, but like the crowds didn't give a shit and there was nobody to give a shit about. I understood why the crowds didn't give a shit. Who were you? Who did you care about? Other than Miyahara, there was nobody on that roster that was invoking any sort of emotion. That is not the case anymore, man. They they, they are they are cruising. And and, and, you know, Satoru Ashino is going to come back and you know, Naoa Nomura, who right. yeah, is yeah. going to come back. You know, they've both been out injured, and they've been trying to get Nomura to come back to the company full-time before he was injured. You know, Dan Tamura won the Junior Battle of Glory. He's 24 years old. You know, and then they wisely put him over Naruki Doi, who obviously is the, you know, freelancing veteran right now who was the junior champion at the start of the year. And has kind of been a constant presence there as kind of this shitbag veteran getting in the way of some of these younger guys. And that's, you know, and that was a nice piece of booking too, having Tamora beat Naruki Doi in that, uh, in that junior battle of glory final, um, you know, so yeah, there there's, and, and you think about it, you, you look a, a, a year ago and this company, it was still all about, uh, you know, Jake Lee, who, you don't have to worry about him anymore. He doesn't even work here. Uh, you know, Suji Ishikawa, he was starting to be phased out, but now he's completely out of the mix. He'll never be back in the top mix. And plus he's washed up. Suwama, knock on wood a little, because he could always find his way back in oh, the yeah. mix. But, but it does feel like he's kind of been, you know, fa- look, he was in a tag team with Hideki Suzuki here, and they basically did comedy shtick the whole tournament. With the fact that you know they were in this odd couple that didn't get along, I think I'm ready to declare no. him out of the mix. 
I think he might, you know, I you think can't, he's on again, the mix. knock on wood. I, I knock think on wood. I am. I got it right here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful, I guess, that he's out of the mix. I, I can't write him off like Ishikawa though. I, I can't write him off wholesale. I, you know, I, I, you know, but you know, and, and, and but anyway, that's sort of, you know, and, and Miyahara, of course, was a constant presence at the top, but you know, now they've gone all the way with Yuma Aoyagi and really, the attendance, particularly in Corrigan, really took off once they belted him up. He is a massive success story this year in pro wrestling, and he deserves down ballot consideration for wrestler of the year. He really does. His output, his great title run, which reju- helped rejuvenate a rising company, and he was part of arguably the tag team of the year. I was going to say, we, AO- did we bring them up last time when we were talking about tag teams of the year? Okay, okay. I want to make sure because I'm watching this match. I'm like, fuck, did we not bring these guys up? Because this might be my tag team of the year. Yeah, I, they might be. You know, they definitely should be in the mix. And, you know, obviously, all Japan being where they are in the pecking order, they're not going to win. No, and, God, you no, know, God, no. Um, you know, because not enough people have their eyes on it. But, you know, they should get votes and they should do well. And, you know, they, they might be my pick at the end of the day. We'll see. But, you know, this is a promotion with a fresh cop of, a fresh crop of bodies on top. They had a great, great year. And things are absolutely looking up. And um, I've got to step away for a second. Go ahead and tell people what you thought of the final. Well, yeah, I, I'll, I'll touch on the final here a little bit. I think, you know, I'll wait for you because I have some data about uh, the numbers uh, for, for attendance. Because I think that's pretty important. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. But, uh, yeah, if you did not see this match, I mean, this was really, really great stuff. High, high, high level work. Uh, uh, from everybody involved I- I- in this. And, and you know, Joe kind of mentioned a little bit, but the Nakajima Miyahara stuff is perfectly, like, it, 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 that. that's the, you just don't get that sort of stuff in modern Japanese pro wrestling that much. I mean, you don't really get that sort of stuff in any sort of level of pro wrestling anymore, where there is still this tinge of these guys hate each other. And the fans know that these guys hate each other. The fans know that these guys don't really get along or whatever. And whether that's true or not, whether they still at this point, you know, obviously it was true at a certain point, whether it's still true, whether they don't, you know, don't, are they going out to dinner with each other? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't think, but the fans don't seem to care. The fans seem to think, okay, these guys hate each other, used to hate each other, whatever. They currently hate each other. So that's fine. Like in, 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 in storyline and in real life, whatever, we don't care. Cause when they get in, it's just a different sound. The, the, the sound that the crowd is making is just like, oh my God, we're seeing these guys fight. And that, you know, that was something that was in, you know, classic pro wrestling when it was like, oh, we believe that these two men hate each other, that these people hate each other and they want to fight against one another. You used to get that uh, in pro wrestling all the time. It used to be a very frequent thing, especially in Japanese wrestling. It just really isn't anymore because now we've, we've seen most of those big time matchups. We kind of know the score, uh, I, I think, across the board. People come and go and, and, and yeah, you know, you just don't have that sort of same vibe. Uh, anymore. Whereas this, yeah, you had it here. And, and these guys, when they got into the match, it was a different level. And these guys worked to a different level, too. Uh, credit to them. Because when they get in the ring and face off with one another, it's stiff shots, it's stiff kicks, it's slaps. Kento does a fucking pile driver onto the apron in Nakajima. Nakajima is just kicking the ever-living shit out of Miyahara. One of those classic Nakajima kicks that you're like, brother, it's a work. <laughs> Chill out a little bit. You don't, to, you don't have to hit that hard. But you know, you compare that to when uh, Amori and Aoyagi are in the ring, and those guys, there's not as much hatred in there, but they're starting to kind of get involved in it a little bit themselves and starting to hit a little harder and hit a little stiffer and, you know, come come at the other guy a little harder, a little bit more, you know, tenacity. And that, and that you know, it just made for what I thought was just a phenomenal, phenomenal match between these two. Uh, I went yeah. four and a quarter with it. I think it's a, a, a match that you should definitely watch. But, uh, yeah, the Nakajima Miyahara stuff, uh, Joe, I was saying, it's just on a different level. It's, it, it's, yeah. it's the type of, of vibe that you don't get in modern Japanese wrestling or really modern wrestling at all, where it's like, I don't know if these guys hate each other, but let's find out because they're about to beat the hell out of each other. There's just a different level of a fight. You know what I mean? It feels like a fight with these two. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and, and that's, that's like what I said earlier. It, you know, those two getting in there is electric. And then the story of the match was was Omori and putting the spotlight on him. Yeah, I thought that you was know, important too. That Nakajima didn't get the pinfall. Uh, it was Omori that got the pinfall. I think that that does a lot for him because again, with Nakajima, it would would it make sense to have him get the pinfall over Miyahara to build to the match at uh, you know the thirty first where where Miyahara is very clearly going to get his win back? Sure, you could do that. 
But why? I mean, when you have a Mori right there, you're trying to build him up to that next level, get him ready for that next thing. Yeah, have him get the glory. You know, you know what I mean? Have him get that pinfall, get the glory, get 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 one over on Aoyagi. Like now you have built in stories that you can tell with that, you know, just with one pinfall. And and again, it would have been very easy to have Nakajima get that, you know, get that win and get that pinfall. But I love the idea that they had Omori do that. I think that was another bit of great booking by all Japan, which has had just a lot of it this year. Just nice little subtle stuff and and the right people winning a lot of times. And the result has been and, you know, numbers well, we'll exploding. Look at, we'll, look at the, we'll look at the rest of the show. Dan Tamora beats Doi. And yep. then Yuma Anzai gets the big win over the tag champs in the, uh, in the, uh, in the semifinal match, you know? So, uh, you know, with uh, one of their biggest shows of the back half of the year, they made sure to put the right young guys over and give them the shine. And now we see what's going to happen going into these big shows they got. So, uh, coming up, but yeah. Uh, so I got Tamora some numbers for you. Was, uh, uh, go ahead, fin- finish your point, and then I got some numbers for you. I was just going to wrap up the review of the show itself I, with the business end of the uh, stuff. Uh, you only watched the main event anyway, right? Correct. All right, yeah, so I'll I'll do this very quickly. So Tamora and Doi, I mean, a, a very good match, and Doi uh, played his role to perfection. I mean, you could probably, Rich, play this match out in your brain without having even seen it, you know, and knowing the having seen a million Naruki Doi matches and seeing him in this kind of role before. And then uh Rena Yabe and Suji Ishikawa, you know, like I said, Suzuki and Suwama really have it, it was like they were doing a buddy like a buddy comedy routine, really, to, for the majority of the tournament where they weren't getting along. And then they did their comedy again, you know, after they lost. You know, Suzuki shook Ishikawa's hand and he disrespected Ayabe, of course. And but Ayabe, you know, stood up to him and shoved him. And then, uh, you know, eventually I think shook his hand and then, you know, he he threw the towel. Suwama ate the fall. So he threw the towel over Suwama's face and, you know, was disrespecting him. And then they did the the comedy bump over the top rope after the match. And um, there's just basically silly antics there. And then, you know, Honda and Anzai beat Voodoo Murder. And the one thing I want to say about the Saitos is... They're really not that bad. Like they're getting better. They're getting good. I I, yeah, no, the, it, the last I've watched of them, I did not watch this particular match, but they're kind of getting good now. Like by again, like I said, by making them bad, they've kind of become good, and now they're getting not not only good at being bad, but good at just being good. Like I think they're getting there. It, it, it's it's very unique to see the confidence. You know what? It's probably just the confidence of getting over. We look. We we keep going back to that one match. We've mentioned it numerous numerous times, dude. Them having that match in their hometown and having it be like a fucking awesome, awesome match. I feel like the confidence is, you can see it. It's palpable with those guys. Yeah, and that match against Miyahara and Aoyagi, I, I wrote this last month. I thought they held up that end of that. I didn't even think Absolutely. that was a carry job. No, no, you know, no, no, they, no. They, 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 you know, held up their end of that and, 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 and again, understood their role in that match and, um, and and I'm watching this match here on this show, and I, I I can't tell them apart. I couldn't tell the Briscoes apart until Mark Briscoe started doing the kung fu thing. So I'm terrible at this, but I don't know which is June and which is Rai. But the the bigger one who wears the t-shirt and has more hair, like the hairier one, now he's not going to age well because he has got a lot of bad luck folly in him in terms of body shape, and he's only going to get bigger as he gets older. And he's already not moving around very good. And these guys are only, well, they're 36 years old. I are older than I thought. So you, you can kind of see him aging poorly. I, you know, but the, the other guy, the smaller one, did anybody in the chat save me yet? Of which is no which one has saved you yet. Me. No one has saved you yet. But no, uh, they I'll can't keep tell them apart it. either as all. They, they can't tell them apart either. <laughs> so I need a means. mnemonic that, to, but, with those. Does anybody, if, if somebody has a mnemonic for the, uh, the Saitos, please. Cause what, once I get one yeah. of those, I'm good. Like it took me, Many, many years to figure out the the Matt and Nick Jackson. But then someone said, Matt Jackson, Matt Hardy, brown hair, brown hair. And I was like, got it. And right. now I'm good. And now I've right. been good forever. I've never had a problem. Usos, uh, I used to do I no, DUI no Uso, but I think they both had DUI, so that, that didn't work. I can't do it, no. And, and now, well, now it's kind of, now it's easy because obviously they're a part or whatever. But but in the peak Usos days, it was nearly impossible to figure out who the hell. Like, they'd be like, oh, no, no, it's easy. Like, Jimmy has the face point on the right side of his face. And I'm like, but who's right? It's like, his right, my right? Like, that doesn't yeah, help that me. wasn't it. That wasn't <laughs> helpful. I was like, that's not going to help. Yeah. They're like, well, the right. I'm like, no, 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 no. Your uh, perspective. So, yeah. But but we, if someone's got a mnemonic for the site, those please please uh, please offer it up. That would be very helpful. We're we're, we're told Rai 
is the bigger one. So he's the one I don't think is going to age well, and, and he's already not moving that, that great. June really isn't that bad. But here's the thing. I think the more work and the more reps that they get, uh, the more they, they they are improving, yeah. and and they work within themselves, and they 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 work to their gimmick, and they understand what they're doing in there. And I don't just disregard or hand wave their matches as disasters anymore. Like this match on this show was a perfectly fine, you know, three and a quarter, three and a half star tag team match with the right team going over. So. And then we talked about the final book. Go ahead and talk about those numbers you've got. Yeah, let, let, let's do a little bit about the business of All Japan just to show what, what you know, a reward for what they've done. And, and you could see it in these real world tag league finals. So they had 1,443 people for this show. And to compare that to last year's real world tag league show, 801 at last year's real world tag league show. Joe, do you remember what the finals were for the real world tag league in 2022? I don't have a prayer of remembering that, but when you tell me, it'll probably refresh my memory. I, I'm reading this, and I wasn't sure, and I had to make sure that it was right, and I found out another way it was right. Oh, I, okay, hold on. This is where there uh, 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 no, didn't Nomura get injured, and then the the final night got all screwed up, and they had to have a decision match, or was that the year before? I think anyway, that was the year before. This match, the finals, was Kento Miyahara and Takuya Nomura versus Suji Ishikawa and Cyrus. Yeah, that was last year where there was an injury, and I, I'm sure that wasn't supposed to be the final. Um, oh, I, anyone... I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, because they wrestled two matches that night, right? They did. They did. Okay. Now, 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 now it's coming back to me a little bit. I do. Yeah, remember I remember that. the card. It got all screwed up because of the injury. So, um, yeah, that was a mess. But your, your larger point here stands. I mean, they they, they couldn't even put 900 people. Yeah, in the 800 and Now they're packing it. Right, 801 last year. So, yeah, going go to 1,400 this year. I'll go back to 2021, and obviously these things are going to get a little funky because now we're kind of in the COVID eras or whatever. But right. regardless, for, for comparison, Cork and Hall, finals of the Real World Tag League, that's just what we're doing here. 2021, 715. Now, again, yeah. I don't know what the restrictions were at that time. I don't remember. But 715 is 715. So that, that's what the number was there in 2021. What I think that tells me more than anything is that 2022, when most restrictions were lifted at that point, only getting 801, kind of reflects that the company was, was, was cold that, yeah, you would think that they would do several, <laughs> several amounts more than what they did during COVID restrictions, but they didn't. They had 801 last year for the real world tag league. So uh, just kind of a comparison point there, 2020, 646, that is in the thick of it. December of 2020, that number you could probably throw out. But again, I think it's good comparison for what they did last year uh, in 2022, where they you know only got a little bit more, uh, than that. So now we go all the way to 2019. Obviously, no COVID, no restrictions on it, stuff like that. 2019, 1,399, which is a, a very, obviously a very, very good number. But this show beat that number in 2019 with a much healthier pro wrestling scene, uh, a much healthier All Japan in, in, in some ways. You know, I, I guess we could argue maybe it was, you know, maybe now is healthier than, than it's been in quite a while. But 2019, 1,399. The finals of that one was uh, Violent, Giant, uh, Violent Giants versus Jake Lee uh, and Nomura. Nail it, nail it, no more. The thing, there. the thing about that is, pre-COVID, Cork and had a different setup too. They're setting up Cork and with less seats now, right? Which is why, like, these sellout numbers are lower than they used to be. You know, they're not like you know peak Dragon Gate when they had the sellout streak when they were cramming fucking eighteen, nineteen hundred people in there. You can't do that anymore because they're just selling less seats. You know, since we've come out of COVID. 1443 is about as much as you're going to get in there these days. Yeah, it's a, with it's the a way that they phenomenal the building number. Up. Phenomenal number. And then yes, we go all the way to 2018, and, and that's where we see kind of a completely different, you know, level of uh, uh, of All Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, 1,758 there, like you're saying, kind of the old setup of, yeah, of yeah, Cork yeah. and Hall. But that's 2018, and again, a much, much, much healthier uh, wrestling scene, and they're not that far off from that, from where they were in 2018, which to me is a tremendous success given where a lot of these other companies are at this time. We talked about it with Dragon Gate a couple weeks ago. NOAA is well documented where their attendance is. Uh, New Japan is, is is good, but mostly kind of flat, you know, in, in terms of growth and, and, and whatnot. And yeah, for all Japan to be up, you know, doubling what they did, basically doubling what they did last year and getting to where they were in 2018. I mean, a lot of wrestling companies uh, around the company, hell, around the world uh, would be more than happy to get back to where they were, you know, in 2018. So that, that, that's that's huge for for all Japan. Just proves that the work they did this year really, really paid off. 
All right, so let's take a for let's take a look at some of these shows coming up. So, uh, what do we got here? Do we have this on the sheet? Yeah. So I got uh, if you scroll down the New Year's stuff, we have All Japan Pro Wrestling. We'll also have uh, their New Year's stuff. We'll, we'll talk about some of the other shows here in a bit. But they uh, they're going to start out on the thirty first uh, with Nakajima versus Miyahara. Uh, so they're right. going to do that on 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 the thirty first. Uh, Shotaro Ashino, he's going to come back. He's having his return match. It's him and T Hawk uh, versus FKA Jiro. Uh, and, and Taichiban uh, or Taichibana or whatever. Who cares about Tachibana. him? Tachibana. Uh, Sigio Tachibana. Yeah, who cares? Who cares about him? <laughs> I mean, who yes, does? Sigio I mean, Tachibana. Yeah. Uh, and then you're going to have... The, the problem there is not the problem there is not Tachibana. The problem there is Jiro. <laughs> right, right, exactly. The it's fact like... that this motherfucker won't go away. That's the problem. Yeah, the problem is I still have to watch him and he comes out and does the jacket thing and it's like, we heard you. We got the jacket thing. It's yeah. it's not funny. Like, you know, it's one of those things, it, it's one of those things where if you come back, it's it's weird. Like, Kushida had that where he came back and was like, hey, I'm Kushida. And everyone was just like, eh. you know, like he, he was nobody wanted him back in the same way. They thought, hey, if you're going to come back after, you know, failing in, the, can you, can you change something up a little bit? Can you do something different? And it was like, I'm the same guy. I, I, I got to tell you, I, I got to tell you, they, they don't do anything with Kushida, New Japan. No. And, you know, you know, I had heard that he wanted to go under a drastic gimmick change when he returns and I guess all of his ideas got rebuffed and they do nothing with him because you'll for, you I forget. Think, he's there. You forget. He's there now. You forget. Yeah. You forget. He's with the company. He comes in for the junior tournaments and basically he works the American shows and then he's a ghost and you know, he teams with Kevin Knight or whatever. But, um, you know, I, I really feel like since he wasn't a true born and he came from outside the system and then he, wanted to move up the heavyweight and they wouldn't move him up the heavyweight. And it would have been preposterous to move him up the heavyweight. He's too, he's way too small. You know, it's, it's, you either have to be tall like Zack Sabre Jr. is, or like Will Ospreay was before he, you know, got on the juice where he was tall or you have to be big. Like, like if you're going to be short, you have to be big. You have to look like a bowling ball, like Tomohiro Ishii, right? Like to be a heavyweight. Kushida is neither, and he never was either. He's a small, slight guy. And, you know, he wanted to move to heavyweight. They didn't want to move to heavyweight, and he, and he quit. And he went to WWE. And I feel like he, he like they're, they're like, all right, we'll take you back, but we're not pushing you anymore. Like, you left. Right, right. And you didn't come through to Dojo, and you left. And now you're just a guy that, all right, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have you around. But this isn't a situation where you're going to best of the Super Junior Finals every year like it was in 2016. You know, you're not a push commodity anymore. And I really feel like that's what killed him. You know, and, and these guys will never learn. I, 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 on one hand, I cannot blame anyone for trying to take a swing at the big money in WWE. Of course. On the other hand, you really got to have an honest conversation with yourself in the mirror and realize – even though I'm Kushida and I'm super talented and I have a good look, they are never, ever, ever getting behind me. And I'm never getting out of NXT. Same thing with Jiro. Okay. Oh, come on. Jacket uh, time. That was oh, the highest of highs, the highest of highs. Yeah. Unless you want to dance like a character as I was doing right now on raw. Um, you're probably not Nakamura being the lone exception and go back before that. And you got what? Hakushi. <laughs> it's like, there's like two guys in the history of that company the modern history of that company that they've gotten behind in on any level whatsoever. And even then it was very, very short term for both of them. So you have a slightly better chance with triple H there, but it's still, you know, Jiro, they gave him a mukbang gimmick and that's, that's Korean. He's not even he's Japanese. <laughs> Close. At one point, he ah, had, like, close enough. Yeah, that's what they, you know, and, and then the next best idea they had for him was jacket time because Kushida wore a vest and he wore a jacket. So they called him, <laughs> I don't know, let's call them <laughs> jacket, jacket time. time and make them a tag team because they're both Japanese and they both wear coats. Like, that's the best they could do for, for that, you know, those. And, and then it was back to fucking level up for, for, for Jiro, you know, but um, anyway, I think that's why Kushida, I don't think he'll ever be pushed again. And in New Japan. And, you know, all Japan trying these guys, look, beginning of the year, remember, they had Onita in. And they were doing the exploding barbed wire stuff with Onita, the dollar store version of it, right? And it wasn't for me, but it was different. And it was drawn to, you know, some new audiences, in theory. They bring in Hideki Suzuki for this tour. It's not for me, but in theory, you know, it's for some, same thing with Jiro. They bring him in. They tried, uh, they were using Minoru Suzuki, all throughout the year, 
the rookie doy they've they've tried different things and it it if it, it and maybe some or all of these acts aren't for you but it kept the cards fresh so from that standpoint i don't like jiro but i could just skip his match you know what i mean right. i understand the mindset i get the mindset oh yeah it's worth kicking the tires it's worth kicking the tires and, and he's still over yeah, like the crowd still kind of enjoys it i don't know how long it's going to last though i think eventually it's just going to kind of wear out a little bit and then he's still jiro at that point and and he wasn't like a, a he was never ever ever anywhere on the same stratosphere of a, of a you know quote unquote star that kushida was either i mean jiro was no no was no, nothing. no 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 he he got real hot in wrestle one and felt like the hottest baby face they had for a while but they were never going to go all the way with him. You can't. I mean, you just, you can't. It's no, fucking no. Jiro. He <laughs> wears a watermelon jacket. You can't. Um, so when are they doing, did they announce when they're doing Dan Tamora versus L. Lindemann for the junior So battle? they have not. Yeah. So so L. Lindemann challenged Dan Tamora after he won the, 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 the junior battle of uh, glory, but they have not announced that one uh, just yet. So the, the 1231 show, all we know right now is the Nakajima Miyahara, the Ashino return match, and they're doing an All Japan versus DDT match as well, which is just uh, uh, Ryo Eoyagi, uh, Rising Hayato versus uh, Yuki Ueno uh, and Toy uh, Kojima. So you got in like an All Japan versus DDT match, but that's all we have so far on that one. Now, January 2nd, uh, the New Year Giant Series 2024. There's a triple crown match on that show, but obviously we don't know who the challenger is and we don't know who the champion is going to be. Uh, or, or we don't, you know, what I mean, like they've left that one completely open, I guess. Well, so. okay, this is why that's good. Yeah, because now Nakajima Miyahara isn't the foregone conclusion. Right, you have no because... idea. They, you don't even know who the challenger is, and of course, they're not going to say who won the match because Nakajima Miyahara hasn't wrestled yet. But I love that they're keeping it completely open ended. So someone's going to win that match, retain the title. Someone's going to come out and challenge them, and then a couple days later, they're going to have that match on on January second, which is cool. You would think too that Omori would wrestle. Uh, Ayo Yagi on one of these on one shows. of them, yeah, yeah. He just pinned him. I mean, so you know, maybe you do Hokuto Omori versus Ayo Yagi. I don't see either one of them booked for the thirty first yet. Maybe they could do a singles match, and the winner of that match can come out and challenge the Nakajima. And it would make sense to be Omori because Nakajima has been disrespecting him the whole tour as his partner, right? And even after the tournament win. After they lifted the trophies, Nakajima paintbrushed him and slapped him in the face, you know, and Omori slapped him back. But that's kind of been the running theme where Nakajima's like, why am I teaming with this young boy? Like, who the fuck is this guy? And he early on the tour, he was like throwing him out of the ring. And like he didn't he wouldn't tag him in. Right. He there's the aura that he's him. carrying the team. And I think that's why that's another reason right. why that pinfall was so important, because it was Omori getting the pinfall for his team. And now Nakajima can either be completely he could be delusional and just think ah no 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 i was still me that carried the team or whatever or you know maybe maybe delusional to a, to a, a in a good sense where like he knows damn well that amori has gotten onto his level and, and and stepped up and won the tournament for him but he doesn't want to admit it and and there's still a little bit you know so so yeah i think he you know you, you would assume that they would that the title shot would get you know returned in some way and that honestly that would be a great sign for me too that nakajima might be hanging around at least for a little bit fingers crossed because i think he had such a different dynamic to this that if Miyahara just pins him oh, and man. rolls him out of the ring i'm gonna be like oh man you know what i mean because now it's like look I- i'm telling you the best thing for everyone the fans the scene in japan is if is if this is where not nakajima because yeah, can you just imagine this guy walking out and you know part of lij or something? that's boring you know what i mean that's boring for everybody yeah, this 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 is the best for everyone. I agree. Maybe not for him. Maybe not for his bank account. <laughs> not his bank but account, but yeah, for me, it's, it's it's great. Yeah, but I mean, it's great for all Japan if he sticks around. I mean, that's just such a great piece to have, and the stories they can tell moving forward. And um, oh, he's got so many stories know, that have never been told against guys. He's never really, really, you know, he's never been in the ring. Yeah, he's with never and, mucked and him up with any of these guys. Really, stories he's he's telling right now, but it would be something, you know, if he is staying. And he beat Miyahara in Noah. He beats Aoyagi for the Triple Crown. He beats Miyahara again in on the thirty first. Yeah, what a statement! And then he, be. and then he beats Omori. I mean, what the fuck? Now you just have the guy buzzsawing through everybody. Now you know what I mean. So it's like that's kind of weird too, and that doesn't really like work necessarily unless you're just trying to build him up like an unstoppable monster. For someone to eventually topple him, you know, maybe Aoyagi down the line gets the title back from him. But um, 
but Miyahara, I mean, would he be willing to lose two matches in a row to it's this a lot. guy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that to me, that would be the shocking, most shocking because it would let me know, A, that Miyahara is like, no, no, no I'm cool. This will be good for our business. This will be good for everybody. But also, like, you're not doing that and then beating Nakajima later in this month. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'd be stunned. I'd be stunned if Miyahara loses to Nakajima again. And then Omori beats Nakajima, and then, they, and then yeah. they roll Nakajima out of the ring, and then he goes to New Japan or whatever. That would blow my mind. Right, and, like, Mi- and Miyahara never beats him. Right, he's got to get so that win like, back. So if he loses, I'm him. like, all right, here we go. Now we're cooking with some juice. Because now we're now we're really talking here. Now I kind of can feel that this guy is going to hang around for a little bit longer. I, I, w- I would assume so. You know what's great about this? We don't know what's going to happen. And we're breaking down different scenarios, and we're excited about it. That's what's great about this. You know, and it's like, uh, and, and, and that's what happens when a promotion gets hot and they're doing interesting things and they have new people in the mix and they elevate people and they bring in a guy like Nakajima. I mean, fuck, how long do we have to sit there and talk about Jake? Is Jake Lee going to get over? <laughs> right, are maybe gonna, now. Are, maybe this yeah, time. Right. <laughs> It'll work. Are going to yeah. go back to Swama again? And it's like, oh, my God, this is, like, exciting and vibrant and interesting yeah. and unpredictable and so much fun. You're going to watch that match on the 31st, and you're not going to, you know, you're not going to know what direction they're going in. And then, you know, depending on who wins, just start to – put things together and maybe figure out, you know, where they're going to go from there. So, um, yeah, this is, this is good stuff. This is exciting stuff. And, uh, definitely looking forward to those three shows. Yeah. January 3rd, uh, right now just announces a, a new year battle Royal. They, I think they do that every single year. Well, they so, always do that. They've right. been doing that for decades. Right. Know, but no, that. no, um, no, no participants announced or anything like that, but, uh, that is the, uh, the lineup for all Japan here in uh, New Year's, and and I guess if we're talking about New Year's, let's let's you want know, to get through all those. Let's let's talk about them all because I think uh, this is is you know pretty important. Kota Bushi uh, returning to Pro Wrestling Noah first time since the summer of 2012. Great Voyage 2012. Uh, he faced uh, Katoge Atsushi, uh, Atsushi K- uh, Katoge on uh, uh, in 2012 there. And that's the last time that he's been in Noah. So he's not been in there since he appeared on their show last Saturday. Uh, challenged Mirafuji for their uh, New Year's show. And uh, yeah, so what do, you, what do you think before we go through the entire car? What do you think about Kotobushi uh, versus Marafuji? I'm very much in the Kotobushi is completely washed at this point. Uh, I, I think I, I'm, I'm fully in on that. There's nothing in AEW that surprised me, but uh, or that's really kind of changed my, my, my tone on that. This, you know, now he's just in a straight singles match in Japan. I think this will be pretty telling to see if he's completely washed or if maybe it was just, you know, the weirdness of being in AEW, the weirdness of mostly being in, because he's been on a lot of like, you know, weapons matches and blood and guts and that sort of stuff. So this is a straight wrestling match against another guy who's probably kind of washed as well. But, uh, you know, I I can't help but get a little excited about Kotobushi versus Marafuji, even if it's in 2024 and I'm not sure if it's going to be good or not. I mean... When's the last time Kota Ibushi had a had like a great singles match? Well, you probably got to go back to uh, <laughs> I mean before it hasn't been on this return. Because, I'll tell you that it's been no match on well, these listen, returns. I, yeah, I thought the Joey Janela match stunk. A lot of people thought it was okay. I thought it was horrible. No, I never it was ending. Bad. Yeah, never. I can't believe that match. I'm looking at it right now. It only went 24 minutes. There's no way that only went 24 minutes. That I yeah, mean, Ibushi almost died. It was just a terrible match. No, I didn't like it either. The Mike Bailey blood sport match was fine for a blood sport match, but was really nothing special. The Okada G1 final was where he got injured. So that match didn't even really. Yeah, I think that was on its way to being pretty good. But yeah, it, 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 it you know, that's hard to. I mean, how far back in that G1, he probably had, you know, maybe the, the Shingo match on night nine was probably the last time he had a consensus great match was October 3rd, 2021 in a singles match against, against Shingo. Shingo, Yeah. Night nine of the G one. I mean, that's a long time ago. (laughs) That's a long time. That by the time that match hits the ring, you're talking 26, 26 months. It'll be 26 months by the time he gets in the ring with Marafuji since he's had a great singles match. So, and what we've seen of him, he doesn't look like he's in great shape. He doesn't look like there's any snap in his offense. Um, you know, he looks like a shell of his former self with this AEW stuff. Right. His his so, body is not where it needs to be, or maybe can't get to that body anymore. But he, it, it's not just, 
it's like an effort thing too. He doesn't even look like a guy who's really trying. And and I don't know. I don't know anything about the guy. I don't know what what his workout routine. But you know what I mean. He comes in and he just kind of looks like. I don't know. He looks like pale, <laughs> like not that put together and just kind of, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's like compared to what we had for Kota Ibushi, it's just like, oh, all right. Like we might just have to adjust to this being a new Kota Ibushi and, and that's fine and that's okay. But I'd like, this will be the tell. Well, I don't, well, oh, oh, hold on. I don't know if it's fine and it's okay because we don't know. We'll find out when he gets in there with Marafuji. Right. I think this is going to be the tell. This will be the first, because then we're going to know, yeah. okay, now we know what this guy is. And now it's like, adjust your expectations properly now moving forward. Marafuji. We all know that that guy's been mailing it in for a half decade, if not longer. The thing about him, though, is when he's positioned in a big match once or twice a year, he's still got it. You know, the Will Ospreay match was great. And when he's in a big title match or a focused high on the card singles match in Noah, you know, is he 2006 Naramichi Marafuji? No, he is not. But can he still go in a big spot? Yes, he can. Is he the right guy to carry a pudgy, hasn't been himself, Kota Ibushi in 26 months, coming off a devastating injury? I I don't know. You know, it's an interesting match from that standpoint. I think we're all going to be watching it, wondering if these two guys can have the great match that we know that they could have had right. know, seven years ago. Right, because you see that match on paper, and you're just like, fuck, yeah, let's go, man. But it's like, I, you know, I don't know. I, I want to I, – I guess I'm cautiously optimistic about it because it's like but – it, but it really will be a do-or-die match for me where it's like, okay, now I officially know this guy ain't it anymore and he's completely washed or, or the motivation's out there, whatever it is. But, like, we'll know what the deal is. We'll know, I think, after this match because now it's like, okay. I Because I, I've heard the – oh, well, he's been blood and guts and he's not comfortable and all It's Okay, here's a straight singles match against another Japanese wrestler on a, on, on a Noah show. They're going to be in a big spot, presumably the main event here. I imagine it's main eventing over the GHC match. Maybe not, but, like, either way, it's a big – It is. That's the big – okay, oh, well, then uh, you there weren't we go. aware of that. Oh, well, then there we go. This, yeah, is, a huge, this is a huge controversy. Because is it really main eventing over the wow, okay. Interesting. This is the main event over Kano and Soya. And apparently on Japanese Twitter, the Noah fans are irate about it. So this has become a big story. And you know, it, it's one of those but things where <laughs> Noah Now they're mad about it, outsiders <laughs> in main events. We were we were mad about that a couple years ago. Get on our levels, guys. Come on. You, you reap what you sow. Yeah, Jesus. Um, you can't be mad about this now. <laughs> look, they're struggling right now. The, the one thing about Noah, and I watch all the big shows, and I watch all the matches that have any level of hype when I crash watch this stuff for the column. Their shows are, you know, you described earlier how all Japan shows used to feel like a funeral. That's how Noah shows feel now. They have no juice. I mean, the atmosphere for these Noah shows, you you have this great production with all of this money backing. Um, the shows look great. There's major league talent in there. And it feels like it's happening in a wake. Nobody gives a shit. The fans are, there's just nothing to sink your teeth into. They had that 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 absolute just just fucking bag of socks. Jake Lee is their world champion all that time that nobody cared about. They finally got the title off of him. But, you know, it's one of those situations where. I mean, you could put Kano and Manabu Soya on last. Everybody knows what the drawing match is here, though, and it's not Kano and Manabu Soya. You know what I mean? Now. From the standpoint of respect. I can understand why people are annoyed. It's not going on last. You know, this is Japan. Things are different in the United States. Nobody would bat an eye. I mean, it would probably be a talking point to some extent, but WWE, you never know what the match order is going to be. Oh God. I mean, you know, you you could have the world, the world title go out first. I mean, you know, AEW Tony Khan tries to put the world title last. There's been very few instances where he didn't, you know, um, is this a slap in the face to Kano and Soya? I mean, Soya doesn't feel like a hot challenger. He felt like a guy who they were getting behind earlier in the year, but it's kind of cooled off. They haven't booked him particularly well in the lead up to this. If, if you look at his uh, match record coming in and he doesn't feel like a hot challenger and he's not a top line challenger and it's, 
you know, I can understand why they're putting Marafuji Ibushi on last, but we just talked about it. This is what Noah did to themselves. Okay. When they had all eyes on their promotion and they were drawing these gigantic houses for Muto's 19 retirement shows, they could have put some effort into elevating some people and they didn't bother. And we warned that it would bite them in the ass. And a lot of smart people agreed with us. A lot of stubborn Noah fans drugged their feet, said we were wrong, said they were doing a good job elevating people. All right, well, who? Who? Right, we're here now. now and who? Now we have a GHC title match, and it's in the semi-main event spot because you didn't elevate anybody. And and it has Manabu Soya. I mean, I like Manabu Soya, but it's got Manabu Soya in it. You know what I mean? Like, well, I don't have a problem with that, except they, they haven't booked them strong coming in. I mean, right. they, they did, you know, it, it, that's the problem with Noah. It's poorly booked. It's poorly booked. You compare that to our All Japan conversation. I don't know who's booking All Japan. We can't find out. We, we have, asked everybody. Uh, by the way, we if you ask. are listening <laughs> and you have any insights or know anybody that you can ask, please, dear, we're not trying to get scoops so we could sell these scoops. We just want to fucking know who to credit for this. No, stuff. we want to know who's booking a promotion. And we want right. to praise them. That's all. You know, that's all. And, you know, you'd think we're trying to get fucking state secrets out of these people by asking them who the booker is. It's like, you know, we got guys like K Fabe and other people in the business and not telling them. I've got other people in the business asking people in, in that company and they won't tell them. Like, We're K Five and brother, brother. Ah, it's one yeah. of, you know, it's like, come it's on. Like, you know, just tell us who's booking the fucking company so we can come on this dopey little show and tell a couple thousand people that they're doing a nice job. That's all we want to do. But I can tell you that whoever's booking no, and I think it's wrong guy again. Although I'm not 100% certain. Ugh. I'm not 100% certain, but I think it's wrong guy, and I think it has been for a while, but I'm not 100% certain. But whoever it is, they're doing a poor job. They're doing a piss poor job. They don't elevate anybody. No one's hot. And that's why Mara Fuji and Ibushi is headlining this show. And quite honestly, it should. It's a bigger match than Kanoa and Abu Soya. It just is. And if they go out there and Kota Ibushi isn't in shape and and he's just done and he's never going to be the same guy. And he's a f- in there and he's a fucking weirdo. And like he was at WrestleMania weekend and he's just not any, it's going to be a fucking disaster. Yeah. Meanwhile, all Japan has two triple crown matches lined up and they're red hot. <laughs> and they're red hot and with it, a bunch of other matches a- that we've already kind of booked. We already know that are going to be booked. They haven't officially announced yeah. them yet, but because of what they've done, we have, you know, five, we could pretty much put five matches on, on their, their three big New Year's shows that are all like matches with pretty big stakes or pretty important matches. Like, you know, with Nakajima no more, if they want to do that, Nakajima and, 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 and Miyahara, well, obviously. And Aoyagi. I mean, and Aoyagi. Yeah. Dan, T- Dan Tamora versus Lindemann right. has got to happen on one of them because they've built things. Right, and the Saitos, Properly. I know they lost They lost a bunch of matches during the tournament as well. So you got built-in tag matches with a lot of those dudes. I mean, you pick, you pick whoever you know who's not involved or whatever. I think Suwama and Suzuki, I think, beat them. So I guess you could do that if you really want. Because Miyahara and Aoyagi are probably going to be busy. But hey, maybe on one of those nights, you do the Saitos versus Miyahara and Aoyagi. On one of those nights, you do them versus Nakajima Nomura. You know what I mean? Like Again, this is what, like, booking well and having good name. And then you're bringing Shota uh, 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 Sharushino back or whatever. So there, there's, like... They're just going to keep on getting better, which is, 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 yeah, a testament to what they've done this year is not chase ghosts, chase old guys, chase, you know, one time big, you know, attendance numbers and big buildings or whatever and, and, and stuff that looks good on paper, but doesn't mean anything for your long term. It's like, all right, let's, who are we building? Who are our guys? Let's build those guys. And now they've, they, with that and a little bit of good booking, they have an embarrassment of riches coming up on their New Year's shows. And, and Noah's scraping the bottom of the barrel with, 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 with hoping and praying that Kota Bushi can go back to what he was four or five years ago. Well, and, and, and bringing in Hiroshi Tanahashi to heat up his Wrestle Kingdom match on the opposite side of a tag with Zack Sabre Jr. So that's what they're counting on. Hiroshi Tanahashi and Kota Ibushi because they can't count on anyone in their own promotion to draw at this point because they didn't build anybody when they had the chance. You know, this is, we usually take an arrogant victory lap. This is an angry victory lap because it didn't have to be this No, and we were screaming about it and telling everybody that would listen, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. Yeah. It's it's seeing a car crash. And here we are. You don't want to see a car crash when you know that it's going to, when you're looking at it and going, oh my God, oh God, oh God, here we go. That car is going to hit that car. We saw it coming a mile away. Oh, fuck. This is what it's going to be like. And this is what it's like now. 
We'll accept apologies, though, if anybody wants to uh, you know, slide in those DMs and apologize to us. But, uh, yeah. Oh, Joe, but look, on the bright side, junior heavyweight title match, you got Daga versus Ata. And if that doesn't get yeah. you excited, <laughs> I don't know what will. Is that I don't know if that's going to – there's no better way to kick off the 2024 than to watch Daga – Versus Ata for the GHC uh, Junior Heavyweight Title. Daga, yeah, he had a he was in the last Cork and made event against Shuji uh, Kondo, and I believe that was the one that had eight hundred and one people watch it. Uh, at, yeah, I don't see um, the son of the son of Doctor Wagner. Um, they might be losing him, and I, don't, oh. I haven't gotten an update on that. That's not good. So. That's that's one of their better workers this last year. That's that's not good. He's not on that show. He's not worried. He's not booked for the second yet. Um, and he might be booked for something else. Someone in the chat might know, but I, th- there's a possibility that he could be moving on. So, um, and I haven't heard an update on that, but anyway, let's go through some of these other shows. Yeah. So, uh, obviously zero one, we love our zero one. They're going to continue their new year's tradition with the show called, and I quote, happy new year and go for it. Ganbare, Shinjiro Otani. Yeah. Go for it. Go That's for what I it. say too. Ganbare, Shinjiro Otani. You know, I, I, I agree. January 2nd. Uh, not a whole lot of exciting stuff on this I don't, show. <laughs> I don't see an obvious. I mean, we're not going to go through all these matches. Oh but God! I don't. God, no. I don't see an obvious main event here. I guess it's um, Yuya Aoyak. Uh, Aoyak. Uh, I don't know. I'm looking at this and and I don't know. I'm with you too. I, I'm reading this and I'm like, I might. Did I miss something? Did I not copy and paste properly? Because I feel like we're missing a a main event here, right? Yeah, I don't know what the money match would be there. Looking well, at card, <laughs> it but, is zero um, one. I don't know if there is a quote unquote. Well, you know what I mean. Money, it's, but I don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it's not like I've been locked in to be honest with what's going on in I guess it's these days. Aoki versus Kitamura, but Yuya Aoki versus Shoki Kitamura. I mean, okay, isn't Yuya Aoki the Big Japan champion? Um, I believe he. Let me see if he still is. I know at one point he was, but let me see if he still is. Uh, he is still. Yes, he is still the the the, the strong champion. So yeah. So um, <sighs> who's he facing on the Big Japan show? Because that would be uh, that. I'm I, sure he's got a title match on the Big Japan show, right? Uh, he so. has Leighton Buzzard. <laughs> the oh, Big Japan uh, show. listen. Let me tell you, Leighton Buzzard made a name for himself this yeah? year. Yes, he did. He won the uh, Rev Pro um, contest to – he earned the match with Will Ospreay, and they had a great match earlier this year. He is from, I believe – what's that Scottish promotion? ICW maybe? The one – we don't really follow it. Um, but that's where he came from. He's been there for a few years. He kind of uh, – did you see the Osprey match or no? I don't think I did. No, I, 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 he, I think I missed that one. It's going to sound weird, but he kind of looks like Hammerstone, but he's a flippy do guy. He's not okay. as big as Hammerstone. Okay, I'm in. But that's his look. Like, I like, like. I like. Okay, like, go like on. Blonde, floppy blonde hair, and and um, but he's a flippy do guy. And he, you know, was Taylor made the face Osprey, and they had a great match. So that's a really interesting matchup, especially like that is a, if you want to talk about Fire Pro Random Button. Yuya Aoki versus Leighton Buzzard in Big Japan <laughs> right. for the strong title. Yeah, like, at, New, just... at New Year Battle Beginning is the name of their show on January 2nd. Man, that's a, that's a real interesting match. I, I got to tell you, too. Somebody sent me um, links to a link to all the Big Japan. So I'm going to have all the, I want to let people know, I'm going to have all those astronaut matches that I need to watch all watched before I write the rest of the columns this year too because um i think i mentioned it on air a couple weeks ago and then somebody hooked me up with 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 the uh with the big japan show so i will go back and then i will also go back and catch up because i'll tell you the the, at, at the start of the year i thought big japan was off to a great start and then i just i couldn't find their 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 uh their shows anymore you're not, but, you're not a core subscriber you know i will japan never pay for core subscriber. I, I, <laughs> I feel like if you pay for core, the FBI, the FBI is going to be looking at you funny, and I just I can't do it. But you know that they in the beginning of the year, the first couple months of the year when I was keeping up, even their death match title stuff was really great. Uh, Hideyoshi Yoshi Kimitani had that great match with Ryuji Ito um, on January fourth. Oh, we and watched that. Yeah, we watched and talked about that. I remember that. 
Yeah, and, and their their strong stuff was good too early in the year, and the astronauts have been good. So, um, man, I have so much to watch before the end of the year. I have to. I got to do CMLs November. I haven't even started CMLL November stuff yet. I got to catch up with all the big Japan stuff. And By the, the way, if, if people stuff. listen to this and they do want to catch up with CMLL in uh, the month of November, uh, Griffin Peltier wrote a great piece for us at VoicesOfWrestling.com with the recommended matches yeah. uh, for the month of November. Yeah. And I went and watched Which some of those recommended matches. Can, they're good. They're good. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're good stuff. I have to use that. I, I'm not going to have time, obviously, to watch every Friday show. So no. yeah. Hatchacero versus that, Stuka but... Jr. was the uh, a, a pretty fun match. I enjoyed that one. Well, that sounds awesome. So it was exactly um, what I, you think it is two barrel chested boys just going at it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like when Stuka gets opportunities, he, he rocks. Oh, he, he, so, he was awesome in this. Yeah. He was great. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's some of the grimy stuff for, uh, for the first week of the year. Yeah. Oh, uh, freedoms has their, uh, blood Xmas show. I know oh, you'll God. be, uh, <laughs> you'll be all right, kids. <laughs> open those gifts. Cause I got to, daddy's got to go watch freedoms, blood Xmas. I got to see, uh, June Kasai in, in his death match his annual death match. But, uh, uh, I, you know, much like when Mike Francesa was told that Stan Lee died, all I have to say is, ah, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> yeah. I'm not watching that blood Xmas either, but I thought I would, thought I'd mention that, but yeah, zero one doing their annual January 2nd show. A uh, happy new year and go for it. Ganbare, Shinjiro Otani, uh, Chris Vice is their champion. I was looking it up to figure out why there's no championship match and he is not on this card. So I wonder if he's not in the country or something's going on with Chris, because that's why there's probably no title match unless they haven't announced something yet. And I'm not on the pulse of my zero one. So, so possibly we're just missing something there, but uh, right now, no uh, championship match announced for zero one uh, big Japan, obviously the, the AR, uh, you know, the, the Leighton buzzard uh, versus Yuya Aoki uh, match for the strong at their new year battle beginning show on January 2nd. And then obviously wrestle kingdom. And then the all Japan shows that we've talked about as well. So that is what's going on in the world of Japanese wrestling for the new year uh, with the new year's shows. All right, let's do a quick little up. Uh, let's, let's, Let's pay some bills, Joe. How about that? Let's give some podcast reads. Pay the bills. Let's pay some fucking bills around here. So this week's episode of the flagship podcast is brought to you by our friends at Magic Mind. And Joe, you know me. I drink a lot of coffee. Sometimes I'll get myself so chock full of caffeine that I'm unfocused. I have trouble staying on topic. I'm fumbling over my words like I'm doing a lot on this show. Just getting my mind together. Ow, you tell me these things all the time. Slow down, Rich. Calm down. <laughs> you know, to take a deep breath. Go. A lot of some coffee. And worse yet, I always get the dreaded crash, especially when I'm doing a three-hour show like this. Right around about, right about now, 9.45, 10 o'clock, I start getting that crash from drinking too much coffee throughout the day. Thankfully, though, Magic Mind has now entered my life. This little shot has improved my mornings and more importantly, my days so much. It's easy to incorporate into your morning routine. It tastes great and it helps me stay on track throughout the day. Instead of reaching for that second, third, or God help me, the fourth cup of coffee to get me through the day, I take this little shot and I am good to go for the rest of the day. Now, Magic Mind gives me mental energy, mental focus. It helps me sleep better and I've been a lot more creative and more focused as well. Uh, Magic Mind has all natural ingredients sourced from the best suppliers around the world. It has no sugar. It's nut-free, vegan, keto, and paleo-friendly as well. So now it is time for you to join me in transforming your days and your nights. Visit magicmind.com slash flagship. Again, that's magicmind, M-I-G-I-C-M-I-N-D.com slash flagship, and use promo code flagship twenty. To get either. Now, you can get two deals here. You decide which one you want to do. You go to magicmind.com slash flagship. Use that promo code flagship20, and you can either get 56% off your first subscription of Magic Mind, or if you want, 20% off of your first one-time purchase of Magic Mind. But again, Magic Mind has a 100% money-back guarantee, so there's no questions asked. There's really no risk. If you don't like it or it isn't improving your days, you don't like the taste, whatever it is, they'll refund you in three to four hours guaranteed. Again, add Magic Mind to your morning routine. Do so at magicmind.com slash flagship. Use that discount code flagship20 for up to 56% off of the subscription or 20% off your one-time purchase. Again, magicmind.com slash flagship, and we thank them for sponsoring this episode of the flagship podcast. All right. So let's, uh, you know, Hey, while we're, while we're getting plugs and paying some bills, Joe, you want to talk about that old, uh, Patreon because you put a teaser up that got everybody very, very excited about, uh, our, what's coming up uh, on our Patreon in the coming weeks and months. Oh, uh, I mean that, yeah, that's going to be out later this week, you know, so I'm putting the finishing touches on that. What Rich is talking about, is I put out a teaser for the next November, which is 
the life, the career, and the death of Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. It'll be a special episode of Jovember to remember. We have reached a point in ECW's history where Eddie Gilbert uh, walks out of the promotion, uh, quit slash fired, which was kind of the story of his career. There's a lot of quit slash fired scenarios <laughs> right. over the course of uh, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Gilbert's career. But I did uh, tons of research, months worth of research on Eddie Gilbert. I put together uh, what really would be like an audio documentary, you could say, on his entire life, career, and, uh, and death which is going to cover uh, everything from his birth until his burial. So um, that's kind of breaking format of November a little. We typically just focus on, you know, the next ECW show, the next ECW story in the chronological history. Uh, but with this one, I thought it was a good opportunity uh, to really talk about uh, the entire career and really the entire life of Eddie Gilbert, because it really plays into his ECW exit. And I think that um, I've uncovered some stuff that, that hasn't really been discussed all that much in the last 30, 35 years. And I think a lot of new nuggets for a lot of people and, and hopefully it'll add some insight as to what really happened when he exited ECW and, and, and what caused the rift in his relationship with Paul Heyman that uh, never really was, fixed before he passed away some 18 19 months later after gilbert exited ecw and um i, I believe exited with the feeling that he thought he was politicked out of his job by paul Heyman, which um todd gordon denies and we get into all of that on the show uh all of the audio clips and everything uh, andrew rich has everything he needs and and um i'm, I'm just about done on my end and it will the 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 master audio will be submitted to andrew within the next 24 to 48 hours and then it's just a matter of how quickly he can get it all put together this is i'm asking him to work really hard on this one so um you know but but um you know we'll get on the same page and we'll get this show put together i don't know how long it's going to be but it's going to be long i'm not going to break it up into two parts though no matter how long it gets and um it, it, it'll be uh it's something where if it if it comes together the way i hope it does it's going to be one of the things i'm most proud of that i've ever done so um not to put you know, you know put too much pressure on myself here but um yeah i think it's going to be really good and i you know i put out a three minute teaser the first three minutes and 11 seconds are available for anybody to listen to uh on our patreon it's not behind the paywall so you can go ahead and listen to that and it's a setup for the uh for the show itself, which is, as I said, the life, the career and death of uh, hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert and all of the, uh, the dirt behind his exit from ECW, of course. And then there's a couple of more Joe Vembers, uh, that will follow right up. I'm going to give him a little bit of space. I'm not going to release them all the same day, but then, um, again, the, 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 the audio has been submitted to Andrew, some of the clips for, uh, what would be the next episode, which would be hardcore TV number 23 from nine fourteen ninety three. That's the go home show for ultra clash. And then the, uh, the next show after that will be, uh, will be the ultra clash review. Uh, so and those are obviously two very newsworthy shows because, uh, that was the first show, uh, post Eddie Gilbert. Of course, Eddie Gilbert was physically at ultra clash and stormed the main event and gave his impromptu promo. And we will cover all of that, <laughs> but, uh, that is, uh, <laughs> Which may not have been as impromptu as people think. See, that's another teaser ah. for, for some of the stuff that I've uncovered. So um, anyway, that's what's next. The Eddie Gilbert show will be out very shortly, maybe before a lot of people even listen to this right now, you know, depending on when you listen to the flagship. And then not much longer after that, there'll be a couple more Joe Vembers as well. Um, I took a long time away from Joe Vember because the Todd is God book came out this year. And so I put a pause. I had to read that book before I continued on with the series because I how didn't is know it, by the way. How, how is that book? I, I, I was I was staring at you it know, the other day, wondering if I should should buy it or, or read it. It's written in a very easy to read format. You'll get through it quickly. Um, he gets through the portion of the book that talks about his upbringing and his life very quick. It gets into the wrestling very quickly, and from there, it's funny. Um, a lot of the early stories that he tells are stories that I've already told on Jovember. So right there, you know, if you listen to Jovember, it's not going to cover a lot of new ground, but then obviously, you know, the book 
goes into years of ECW where I have that I haven't gotten to yet. But um, yeah, it's an, it's a fun read. It's a really fun read. It's it's you know he wrote it with Sean Oliver, you know, and and he does a great job. And and those two guys they've done shoot interviews with each other um, over the years. And um, you know it, it's it's there's a lot of humor, and you know it's all from Todd Gordon's perspective. You got to keep that in mind. OK, so and he works um, in the wrestling business and he is Todd Gordon and he <laughs> so, owns any any and he owns a pawn shop. So you know, anyway, <laughs> right, you know, keep in mind who the who, so, who the narrator you know, is so, here as a pawn shop owner that used to be a wrestling promoter. So, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it's it's, it's it, the book is good, but I couldn't continue. The, the series had to pause until I read that book. I mean, that that was essential reading. I'm glad it came out when it did. Um, and I added it to, you know, I, there was a pile of books I read before I started this thing that I still reference, uh, in every episode, but, um, but yeah, now that I've read Todd is God, I've got a lot of audio in the can. Andrew's all set with what he needs to put it all together. He does a fantastic job. Cause I have some really, I feel like I put a lot of demands on him in terms of inserting the audio and everything. And, and I'm pretty particular about it, but you know, he's all set. So we should have a bunch of them out in a, in a timely manner as we close the year here. And then from there, I, I I love doing November. It's my favorite thing that I do. So I want to do more of them, and I want to do them more often. So I've made some decisions on some other things I'm going to cut back on so that I can concentrate on November more because I don't like that they come out so infrequently because I love doing them, and it's my favorite thing that I do. But this Eddie Gilbert project and this Eddie Gilbert show has reinvigorated me on everything, and I've got Todd has got all, all, all read now, and – I'm ready to go, man. So I'm fired up. There's going to be um, probably at least two new episodes that come out before the end of the year. And um, you know, probably not three. I, I want to space them out and give people time to listen to them. But uh, those will be the next three. The Eddie Gilbert tribute, uh, the Hardcore TV. Uh, what was the date on that Hardcore TV? Um, yeah, the 914-93 Hardcore TV. Which Todd Gordon, interestingly enough, I'll give you a little nugget. You know, he 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 walked into the studio because the show was late, and you know that's when Eddie Gilbert walked out on him. So that's the reason Todd Gordon hosts that episode of TV instead of Eddie Gilbert because that was the day that Eddie Gilbert walked out. Oh wow! And the tape was and the tape was already late, so Gordon had to produce that episode, which was the go home to Ultra Clash, very important episode. He had to produce that himself, and he had to you know replace Eddie Gilbert with Kevin Sullivan on the show, and. And um, and if you notice at the end of that episode, um, Eddie Gilbert's name is removed from the credit. Thomas Edwards is removed as as producer, right then and there. Todd Gordon wasn't fucking around. That guy said walked out, and Gordon said, "All right, you're gone, and you're gone forever." So, um, that's why it's a a, a pivotal episode of the TV. And then the next episode after that will be the uh, the big Ultra Clash review with all the drama that happened there with the Eddie Gilbert promo, and then. Paul E blowing up in the locker room because he was annoyed that Gilbert, you know, uh, gave the promo and interfered in the main event and, and all the drama that goes along. Right. And also so, I think historically considered a pretty bad show, right? It's funny because um, in real time, it was considered a great show, but with modern eyes, it's a pretty bad show. I could tell you that uh, here, I could read you. We don't have a lot of topics tonight. I could do that. Ah, go ahead. So I can Fuck read it. you. Do it. Um, here, let me grab you this. I have. So, if you saw my desk right now, oh my <laughs> a little melter, a little melter action there. Uh, it is very uh, uh, melter esque. Um, Speaking of that, by the way, while, while you're getting your uh, papers together, yeah. uh, the Good, the Bad, and the Hungy podcast here on the Voice Wrestling Podcast Network got an interview with Dave uh, this week and uh, just asked him questions. They just shot the shit about wrestling for. for uh, a couple of hours. So that's really, really good. Highly, highly recommend that. The Good, the Bad, and the Hungy, uh, which is our usual AEW review podcast, uh, was able to hook up with Dave, get him on, and, and just ask him questions. Ask him listener questions for, for, for a while. So uh, go listen to that. It's available on the Voice Wrestling Podcast Network, or you can subscribe uh, to the Good, and the Bad, and the Hungy podcast, as well as your podcast app of choice. Also on YouTube, if you want to go to the uh, uh, YouTube page as well. It is all on there. But, uh, yeah, highly, highly recommend checking that out. Uh, really, really good stuff. But, uh, all right, what do you got? All right, so the September 27th, 93 Observer, and I quote, the most talked about independent show in this country in several months was Todd Gordon's Eastern Championship Wrestling show at the ECW Arena in Philly on 918. This is Ultra Clash. 
The figures reported to us were standing room attendance of 1,131 fans and a $16,147 gate. Uh, many have disputed those numbers, claiming 780 was the accurate <laughs> attendance figure and less than that paid. Either way, it was the largest show in the company's short history and one of the wildest shows in recent memory in the United States. We received several reports with some calling it the best house show they had ever seen. Huh. And others saying it was the best show they'd seen in months or even a few years. While others were more critical, saying the show had the same excess with 12 guys juicing that led to the demise of Joel Goodhart's promotion. That's Tri-State, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, still, the basic agreement was that the main event, while scheduled as a barbed wire baseball bat match between the Headhunters versus Crash the Terminator and Miguelito Perez stole the show, even though the announced stipulation never took place. I will get into why that stipulation never took place on November. How's that for a little teaser? Um, it was announced that there would be no barbed wire baseball bat due to the commission stopping the match. But again, I'll tell you why it was really changed on the uh, on, on November. Um, well, Dave actually gives it away here in this observer, but I'm not going to read that part. Uh, it's it's hilarious why the stipulation was changed, by the way. Uh, the two teams brawled for eight minutes and 38 seconds, pounding each other with the bat and brawling all over the building. Uh, the highlight of the match was a quadruple juice came when Perez whipped one of the headhunters into the wall of the building drywall creating a hole with drywall flying everywhere and a big crack in the wall. So um, then he just goes on to talk about all the matches and we have reports varying from three and three quarters to four stars on the main event. And let's see the main event, which was Kevin Sullivan, Abdul, the butcher versus Terry Funk and Stan Hansen. That's the DQ finish when Eddie Gilbert jumps in and attacks Funk, whether he was instructed to do that or not. Uh, we will get into on the show. Everyone, but Hansen juiced. How about Stan Hansen saying, I'm not running the race for this <laughs> yeah, shit. Fuck this. I, no. <laughs> I want my $500 and I want to go back to Japan. Okay. I, I am not uh, cutting myself open for this bullshit, which was rated anywhere from three stars to four stars with many crediting largely to Funk's antics. So uh, as you can see in real time, at least the reports that they've gotten, they have to remember. There weren't a lot of shows of this type. I was going to say, yeah. this is a That's lot of, I mean, if you go back to 1993 and the quote unquote independent wrestling scene at, the, at that time, it, it really pretty much a non-existent scene in a lot of ways. This is a wild show post territory era. This yeah. is like, it's got a lot of names on it. A lot of big time names, but important names. So I could absolutely see how there, if you were there live watching this in real time, you'd be like, holy shit. I can't believe we're seeing all these guys wrestle. But yeah, I could see how going back and watching it in, you know, 2019 or whatever, it doesn't have quite the same, you know, a uh, feeling to it. But yeah, Terry Funk, Stan Hansen, Kevin Sullivan, Abdul, the butcher, Shane Douglas, you know, the head hunters. That, that's, that's wild stuff. For, well, they, for... Yeah. They had the wing, the wing wrestlers were in for the taping before that and for ultra clash and then for the taping after, although a headhunters no showed the taping because uh, Heyman put together public enemy who debuted at ultra clash. Heyman brought, they weren't originally booked for the show Gilbert because Gilbert booked the original lineup and Heyman put public enemy together. He put uh Rocco rock and, and Johnny grunge. Together. You're getting a bonus November, right? Oh, this is great. He, yeah. he, he put them together and he put them on the show after Gilbert walked out and they worked the opener and Heyman had booked public enemy versus the headhunters for the TV tapings the next day. And the headhunters no showed. So that match never happened. But the thing about the wing wrestlers is they didn't get paid for any of those shows. Not for the reasons that you would suspect with ECW Victor Quinones offered them up to Todd Gordon for free because he just want, he knew Todd Gordon had TV and he just wanted those guys to get television exposure in the United States. So they got all those dudes for nothing for three or four dates. So you couldn't really be mad at the headhunters for not showing up to the tapings because they presumably weren't getting, unless Quinones was paying them and who knows if he was or not. Now, these are, these are classic men that I'm not surprised. It was uh, pointing the other. <laughs> no, he's going to pay you. No, no, no. He's going to pay right. you. That's that does not, that does not surprise me that uh, there was some, some ambiguity, ambiguity about who was being paid by who at that time. And with these particular yeah, men being involved. So the wing guys were the first big international stars that ECW used. And, 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 you know, uh, Gilbert booked them because Doug Gilbert was a regular in wing working as Freddy Krueger. So that was the hookup there. And Doug Gilbert, of course, was working ECW as, as, uh, fuck was his gimmick? Uh, Dark Patriot, of course. So, um, 
you know, and, and that, that was the connection with the wing guys who, and that's why they work those shows. But, you know, we talked about that on previous Jovembers, but yeah. Um, if you're new to J- Jovember, it's probably a good time to start listening to them. Now. I think there's how many have I done 22 or something like that. So um, it's a good time to get through them, listen to them chronologically. And that big Eddie Gilbert uh, episode will be coming out, you know, sometime over the next couple of days. Yep, and that's on the five dollars tier, uh, as well as all of our bonus audio. Uh, you're also going to get this month a brand new episode of Brett versus Owen, my uh, audio documentary series about the Brett Hart versus Owen Hart feud. Uh, we did November rave reviews for that one. Uh, the Survivor Series turn. Uh, we're going to do December of 1993 uh, in obviously December of this year, as we're, we're approaching the 30th anniversary of it all. So yeah, it's going to be um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I, I'm I'm really excited about this. And December has a lot more than I think people think uh, with the Brett Nolan thing. We got a couple twists and turns. We got some fun matches, some great great promos. This is where you get the the all time great promos of Owen challenging Brett. You get Brett then saying, "I'm never under no circumstances ever going to face my own flesh and blood or whatever." So just iconic promos, and then obviously the they come together for the Christmas season. They went and they talked over things over Christmas and they are now back as a team. And, and so things end up pretty good at the end of the month, but obviously we know it is going to be very, very short lived. So that's going to uh, change in January, but we're going to go month by month uh, with the Bret Hart versus Owen Hart feud. You know, we started in November, going to go all the way to April uh, and, and March or whatever with the, the WrestleMania and then jump ahead to, you know, the summer and, and whatnot. But uh, that is all available on the $5 tier again at uh, flagship patreon.com. We're going to get all of our bonus audio, uh, that we do the Thursday Dynamite reviews. Uh, Ten dollars tier gets you all of our live shows, including live flagships as well as live uh, instant reaction shows. Uh, of which we'll have one at the end of the month here with AEW World's End uh, uh, coming up. So definitely get on that, and uh, all of our written stuff will be on the ten dollars tier as well. So that is all available at flagship Patreon. Dot com. And I also mentioned earlier about the uh, the notebook. If you get your official the notebook notebook, that is available at voicesofwrestling.com slash flagship merch. And uh, you can also go into Redbubble and look up the flagship, and you can probably find it uh, as well. But VoicesOfWrestling.com slash flagship merch is how you're going to be able to get those notebooks, the flagship mugs, the November to Remember stickers, all that other good stuff available there at VoicesOfWrestling.com slash flagship merch. All right. So let's uh, let's get to uh, some of our other topics here before we uh, uh, say goodbye for the night. Uh, New Japan World, uh, or New Japan uh, World Tag League, I should say, they have a uh, semifinal sort of set. We have one half of them, the... Uh, uh, a block, you have Alex Coglin and Gabe Kidd are moving forward as the A block one, and Shane Haste and Mad Mikey Nichols moving forward from the A block uh, as the number two. So they will be facing the B block semifinalists, uh, of which we will figure out on tomorrow's show. So we're recording this on the sixth. Uh, by the time a lot of you guys are listening to this, we'll already probably know who is going to be in those matches. Uh, but the B block matches are Atlantis and Soberano. Uh, versus Van, uh, Zandokan Jr. and, and, and Yota Suji. So we'll see who uh, emerges from there. I think both of those guys, I, I have to look at all the tiebreakers, but Atlantis and Soberano have five, and, 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 and Suji and, and, and Zandokan have six. So I think they're both out of it, given some of these other numbers. I'm sure there's some weird tiebreaker stuff that you can get, but I would not expect either of those teams to uh, to move forward in the uh, uh, the World Tag League. Uh, you have Monster Sauce, Alex Zane, and Lance Archer. They have eight points versus the Gorillas of Destiny, El Fantasma, and Hikuleo. They have eight points, so that seems like a very, very, obviously a very, very important match there. P- maybe potentially the block decider, or at least you know deciding who's going to move forward because uh, two people from the block move forward. Uh, World Tag League uh, here, B-Block, uh, Bishiman, Goto, and Yoshihashi. They have seven. Just five guys have eight points. That's Taichi and Yuyu Omura. And then Minoru Suzuki and Yuji Nagata have two. And the Rogue Army of Bad Luck Folly and Jack Bonza have four. So they're non-factors in there as well. So I think you're pretty much looking. I, again, I'd have to look at the tiebreaker stuff. I'm sure there's some weird, weird scenarios that could potentially get those those the top guys in there or, or possibly in the mix. But I think you're looking at Monster Sauce versus Gorillas of Destiny uh, and Bishimon versus Just Five Guys to decide who's going to be uh, moving forward into the semifinals. But uh, that is the World Tag League. Uh, we'll touch on that as we get to the finals uh, here in uh, in the next week or so. So nothing on this show. We're just going to move on. Uh, with that, but uh, that's what's going on in the world uh, tag league. Uh, Joe, let's. Uh, hey, we're talking about Japan, right? So let's do this. I'm going to do. I, I very rarely do this, and you know it, it. It takes a lot to pass the test of what 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 gets through. As a rich is recommending a Joshi match to Joe, and I'm going to do it here. So get on your Wrestle Universe, of which I know you subscribe because I use your account. We are TJPW. <laughs> 10th anniversary show from December 1st. It's a best two out of three falls tag team 
match. It is the Magical Sugar Rabbits. I know you're a big fan of the Magical oh, Sugar come on. Rabbits. <laughs> I'm not gonna, how about I just don't give you the cutesy names? Is it better if I don't give you cutesy names? I'm already looking at it. I okay. Mean, you're asking me to watch Magical Sugar Rabbits versus Daisy Monkey. Well, it's not that's uh, those are just a two of the the five on, on the teams. It's Mizuki uh, and Yuka Sakazaki. You know Yuka Sakazaki, the genie girl. Very with, with the great with the great yeah. theme music with the fantastic theme music. You <laughs> told me there'd be no frilly little skirts. No, no, and... no. Run the tape back. I'm doing the, the finger thing again. I said there will be frilly skirts. I said they're not going to do a but they're not going to spam meteoras. I said there would be frilly skirts, and I said the tail woman would be there. We go from Stan Hansen and up to the butcher <laughs> to this, but okay, but okay, all hey, right. It's a different vibe. I uh, so it's Mizuki, uh, Yuka Sakazaki, uh, Mio Yamashita, Rika. Rika Tatsumi and then Shoko Nakajima. That's their, your Tandori uh, with the claws and the, and the tail. Who you always admit that you actually enjoy a little bit. So she's in this match as well. She can work. I don't know why she has paws and a tail, but she can <laughs> it works. You know what? Yeah. Uh, and they're against uh, Daisy Monkey, as you said, but not, that's not the entire team. Uh, it's a Risu Endo and Suzumi, uh, Miyu Watanabe, uh, Mocha Miyamoto, and Yuki Arai. Okay. Two out of three falls. Is Yuki Arai is Yuki Arai the one that's like six foot and walks like a baby giraffe. Uh, like with no agility <laughs> no, no, that's from DDT. No, 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 no. That's uh, that's who? No, that, that is not Yuki Arai. That is what's her face from DDT. I think she just retired, actually. Saki Akai, I believe, is who that is, right? Uh, okay, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Right, I think that's Saki Akai. Yeah, no, she's. I think she's either retiring or about to retire. Or uh, um, she was the shit. <laughs> she oh was not very God, good. She was yes. Terrible. Uh, I've always yeah. told the story that we had uh, there was just some great uh, interactions with her and uh, and and multiple members of the Voices of Wrestling crew at the WrestleMania weekend. Um, where one she like quartered me at at one time and was just like, "Are you enjoying the show?" And I'm like, "Yes, yes." And she's like, "Are you enjoying the show?" I was like, "Yeah, I think I've answered it." She's like, "Enjoying the show?" I was like, "Yeah." I, I didn't know how to get out of the conversation. I didn't know if there was like a weird translation issue or something. But she just kept asking me if I was having fun or enjoying the show, and I was like, "I am. I really am enjoying it." And then she just kept asking the same question. And then eventually, I just kind of walked away or whatever. So. Uh, then later in the night, um, she did the same thing with did Andrew the Rich. Tall girl, the, the tall girl? The tall girl, yeah. Well, she's friendly at least. Yeah, she's very friendly, yeah. And then, I uh, mean, she walks around like that scene in Bambi when he's on the, 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 uh, the frozen over <laughs> lake and not, he can't see. Yeah, she wasn't still. a great, was not a great no. wrestler. A good, a good ambassador yeah. for DDT for wrestling at, uh, uh, at the sure. New York uh, shows. But then an even more, an even longer thing happened with her and Andrew Rich, the aforementioned Andrew Rich, the producer. Where we're walking out of the building, and she goes, "Did you enjoy the show?" And Andrew's like, "Very much so." Yes, yes, you know Andrew. And he's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's being as yeah. nice as possible, and then he's nodding, and she's nodding, and he's nodding, and she's nodding, and he goes, "Uh huh, yeah, yeah, yeah." And she goes, "Uh huh, uh huh, yeah, yeah." And this went on for like a minute. We're all that, Andrew, walk that, away. <laughs> What's going on? That here? might that might still be happening between <laughs> those just two. Nodding, and nobody's ending yeah. the conversation. Nobody, and he's like, "Uh huh, it was great. Oh yeah, we had a great time. Great time. Yeah. Great time." It's like the problem was, was there was a lot of people walking out, so we couldn't really like you know we couldn't get right. out. He couldn't, couldn't just like, yeah. but we're in this line, but yeah, they're just both nodding at each other. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Really? Oh yeah. 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 We love the show. Love the show. Love the show. Love the show. And it just kept going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, it might still, it may have just ended a couple minutes ago. So now he has time to review or to, to, to cut up the, uh, the Eddie Gilbert audio documentary, but no, that was, that was Saki that Akai. Was that uh, was the, the Bambi that you're, you're talking Carrie about. Carrie Silken used to do that after ROH shows. Oh, He'd well, stand no, 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 no. Good ROH shows. Hand. No, no, Good I know. ROH and then, shows. yeah. If there was something bad, like if there was a really bad Age of the Fall angle at the end or something, you couldn't find Silken with a search. Point. Yeah, where's that Hawaiian that shirt done. guy? Where's that? You can't right. find that Hawaiian shirt anywhere. He's in the back. He's in the bathroom. He's doing couldn't whatever. Be found. Yeah. yeah, but uh, you know, American Dragon has another fucking kick-ass main event. There's old right. Carrie Silken ready to shake everyone's hands. Every hand. I shook that man's hands so many times. Yeah, unbelievable. A lot of good shows in that era, so yeah, a lot, a lot of, lot of, lot of carry shakes. But uh, yeah, so this is this is this match. And now here's what I'm gonna tell you about this match to kind of preview it. And I'm not gonna give too much away of it. It's a best two out of three falls match. It is a five person, a five woman team of the veterans of of Tokyo Joshi Pro, and a five woman team of kind of the newer breed or whatever. You know what I mean? Like uh, it's the old yeah. versus the new, veterans versus rookies. Two out of three falls. So it's not an elimination match. Which works and it doesn't work. In in some sense, it it it, it would almost be pretty. It, it'd be pretty cool if it was an elimination match. You know what I mean? Like it'd be cool to have you know one by one get out. Like like good good Japanese elimination matches. There's nothing better. Some of the best matches ever are are, are those big time 
10 person yeah. elimination matches or whatever. This is not that, but what it's also helps this is that every fall matters a lot. And there's going to be a fall that happens really early. That's going to kind of shock you. And you're gonna be like, Oh wow, that was really, really early. And it, it shocked me too. And that's when I first was like, wait, I thought this was uh, a two out of three falls and not an elimination match, but it is, it is two out of three falls match, but an elimination happens right away or, 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 or a fall happens right away. Wait, and hold it, on. What are the fucking rules here? It's two out of three falls. Whichever team gets two falls first wins. Oh, okay. so so they're not getting that's eliminated. A, that's different. That's yeah, different. It, it's unique and it, and it works. And that's why I said it, it like it both works and it doesn't work. It doesn't work because like you're like, ah, oh, shit, I really wish this was an elimination match. I think it could it could raise the stakes a little bit, but it makes the falls even that much more important, including at the beginning. You're going to get a fall that's going to really be like, whoa, that was way early. So All right. So hold on. Hold on. So if you score a fall, that person's eliminated and no. you're also up one nothing. No, no, no. Nobody's eliminated. So it's not an elimination. It's match. not an elimination match at all. It's just best two out of three falls. Best two out of th- it's a it's a it's a, a, a ten per a ten woman tag. Best two out of three falls. Okay, all right. So it's simple. It's, yeah, exactly. It's simple, really. Yeah, it's, it's simple. A yeah, it concept. is. It is. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you concept. win, you go home. <laughs> you, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but it, it, it works pretty well. But there, there's a good little uh, good little finish that happens at the at pretty early on. But what I'll say about this is it reminds me in a lot of ways of what a match that Dragon Gate used to be able to do that I feel like they can't do anymore, where it's just 30 minutes of people doing a ton of shit. Everybody's in the right place. Everybody knows their spot. Everyone's got a unique thing. Everybody looks unique. Everyone's got their own colors. Everybody's got their own moves. Everybody's got their own thing. But then they all kind of come together and just form this thing that's just perfect. You know what I mean? And, and, and for some people, they hated that about Dragon Gate. That was the worst part about Dragon Gate, that it was like, look at these perfectly formed machines just going in here and doing all this shit. Everything looks perfect. Everything is nailed at money. One person's yeah. in the ring. One person's out. One person's flying. I mean, like, people, some people hate that. I love that shit. It works for Dragon Gate. It works for certain promotions. You're going to see that in this match, and I think you're going to like it. I don't know if you're going to like it. I, this is a risky one. This Sometimes I give you, like... Julia oh, so versus this, one, this you admit woman. This one's risky. This you one's a risk. This, one's, this one's a risk, but I think it could yeah. pay off. I think it's a it, it's a big risk. There's some that I know, no doubt. I'm like, here's Julia versus somebody, and they beat the shit out of each other for 35 minutes, and they hit bombs on each other, and it's gonna like I know that's gonna be good. I know you're gonna like that. This one's a risk. There's a lot of skirts. There's a lot of tails. <laughs> I don't know if there's that many meteoras. There's a lot of screaming. This one it might not work, but I think I'm confident that that I got one for you here. But Think about that. Think about classic Dragon Gate when you watch this match and, and how a, a veteran team is facing a rookie team, how the rookies are adapting to the veterans, how the veterans are adapting to the rookies. And then the finish is very important as well. And I want you to make note of the finish, too, because I, I don't want to spoil it here. Would it be better if I would it be better if I spoil it or is it better? No, no, no. Okay. Just let I'm me watch the match. I'll watch the match. Uh, it, the, the, I, I know. I I'm a veteran wrestling watcher. I'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. There, I, I, you, you, you will know. get it. You will get it. Because the finish annoyed a lot of people, but I loved it. Okay. The finish made a lot of people not happy and made me very happy. It's the best way to put uh, it. All right. So okay. it, it's one of those things that is unrewarding, but in for for veteran pro wrestlers is rewarding. And it will, again, remind you of classic Dragon Gate. Including some, actually, it reminds you of something that happened in, in, in Drag Gate pretty recently a, 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 as well. So that is the – we are Tokyo Joshi Pro Show, December 1st, um, their 10th anniversary show, available on Russell Universe, which uh, – right, I will report back next week. All right, which is still blowing away uh, the new New Japan world. I know that we got the new New Japan world rollout, and it's fine. I can use it. The video quality has not improved at all. It looks exactly the same, so it still looks like it's – being broadcast from a potato. I, you so. know, I haven't. I I still haven't watched a minute of World Tag League. I haven't really messed with New Japan World yet, so I I can't. Oh, comment. you're I gonna get annoyed because it's gonna have. You have to reset all your shit, and yeah, you're gonna be. Oh, I oh no no no! I did put my. I, I'm logged in. Oh, okay, I did okay, go through okay, that okay, process. Okay. All right, all right, but, good. Yeah, I haven't really watched anything on it yet, though. Is what I'm saying. So. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's like some people are having big issues with it. I'm not having big issues with it. I'm just kind of annoyed that uh, it doesn't seem like things are that much more improved. So kind of feels a lot of the same in a lot of ways but and the archives are much less than they were so not much improved and they took away most of the archives so i can't be super happy about that unfortunately but uh there you go so that is my joshi recommendation we'll check back with you next week and see uh see if you watch it and see what you liked or didn't like all right we are if nothing uh, we're the nwa podcast we we, we've we've worn that badge of honor since we began and hell this is a nwa topic so we got to touch on it not new news per se but uh new japan uh, new japan <laughs> nwa has announced uh that in october they were returning to the affiliate system 
Uh, but it is gaining some steam. New promotion linked up, so I, I think it's worth talking about now. I think we talked about it at the time, but if not, uh, uh, here's a good opportunity to do it. Uh, in October, EC3, yes, EC3 has a uh, promotion that's not control your narrative. It is called Exodus Pro. Uh, in October, they linked up with the NWA and became NWA Exodus Pro Midwest. Now, this week, NWA announces they have signed a deal with Joe Kazana Promotions Southwest for JCP, Joe Kazana Promotions. No, not that JCP, to become NWA JCP Southeast. Yeah, so Joe Kazana, for people who don't know, was a WCW job guy in the late 80s and the early 90s. He was all over the TV. And, uh, you know, worked some of the dying territories of the day. There weren't that many left and probably worked a lot of it long forgotten in Southern Indies at that yeah, time. Yeah, he was the golden boy. He had like a long, he kind of had like a, had a long, like long blonde mullet, I think is probably the best way to put it. I think he wore, I'm yeah. trying to remember what his gear was. You, you've seen him. If you watched any of that era of wrestling, you, you probably saw him then in a squash seen, match. Yeah. 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 And he's one of the guys where I think, he's an important person for the NWA to have around for legacy reasons. Cause he's got connections, um, you know, to, to the, to the NWA of the past, and, you know, and his son, AJ Kazana has been with the NWA for a while. One half of the country gentleman actually he has a second son, KC Kazana, who's now teaming with AJ Kazana as the country gentleman, because um, the other half of the team left the NWA a couple months ago. Anthony Andrews uh, is no longer with the NWA. So the new country gentlemen are AJ Kazana and KC Kazana managed by Joe Kazana. Mm-hmm. So he's got both of his sons in and he does manage them from time to time. So he's been affiliated with the NWA for a while now, but I think it's important to have the Kazanas and the Mortons and Samantha Starr, who is uh baby doll and Sam Houston's daughter and Austin Idol and people who have connections to the old NWA, because I think, uh, if you're going to use those letters and you're going to use that legacy and history, then you may as well keep those connections to the past and keep that stuff alive. So, um, you know, both of the affiliate promotions that have hopped on board are owned by people who work for Billy Corgan and the NWA. So um, Kazana's JCP, it's like, whoa, Jim Crockett promotions is, <laughs> no, signed with the, is back. With, this is huge news. They're back with the NW. No, it's not Jim Crockett promotions. It's uh, it's uh, Joe Kazana's promotion where, uh, quite honestly, a lot of the NWA talent have been working for Joe Kazana and his indie, his Tennessee indie for a long time, whether it's Hillbilly Silas Mason, whether it's both of his sons, well, Ella Envy. Um, uh, there's a few, uh, Jeremiah Plunkett, you know, uh, came out of there. So, um, obviously there have been long time connections to Joe Kazana and his indie promotion. And a lot of the wrestlers who he got started there or who came through there are now mainstays on the NWA roster. So, you know, it makes a lot of sense from that perspective for Joe Kazana to hook his promotion up with the NWA. And now he can throw, uh, the NWA branding on all of his shows. And, and I believe they just had a show a couple days ago, the, the Hal Colefield stole Christmas show, which was co-branded with the NWA. And I think Billy Corgan made an appearance. Yes. Show. Yeah. He made an so, appearance and, and that's when it all kind of came together in the announcement that, that they were going to do this. And yeah, it was filled. It was filled with NWA talent too. And Colby Carino and Kenzie page and Murdoch was yeah. there. And like you said, the country gentlemen and Mims and, 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 and a bunch, a bunch of people on there. But yeah, that, that is when uh, they made the announcement that they were, they were joining up with the NWA and, and are going to become uh, NWA. What, what was the uh, official title that I had there? NWA JCP Southeast. So we're back yeah. to affiliates and now we have two NWA Exodus pro Midwest and NWA JCP Southeast. Yeah. And Exodus pro is EC3's promotion. You know, he gave up on the control your narrative thing and they've only run a couple of shows and I think he's running that out of Cleveland, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think he's running. And, you know, he's using a lot of NWA talent, too. You know, I think he wrestled Fodder on his last show. I'm pulling it up now. Yeah. So he wrestled Fodder. Missa Kate was on that show. So, you know, you see a lot of the NWA names popping up on that show as well. Um, look, I think these are good deals for the promoters. 
Uh, they get whatever the NWA branding is worth, which honestly wasn't worth anything the last time around under the last regime. You would pay your $50, yes, $50 per year <laughs> um, to to Bruce, uh, you know, to Bruce Tharp or, or Chris Ranquillo, you know, and whoever was in charge at that time. And there were NWA affiliates quite literally all over the world, you know, mostly in the United States, but they had some in Australia. They had them all over the place. And none of them had any connection. And, yeah, at and one time we did a just, gimmick on the show where we counted all of them, and I and, and we were reading yeah. them and just laughing about like these just nothing happening promotions that were a part of the NWA that that no one yeah. has ever heard of that you've never it, it, yeah just laughable. Yeah, and and they would pay their fifty dollars a year in, in hopes that it would sell a couple extra tickets, which it probably didn't. I think in this case, with the promotions being so closely tied to the actual NWA, anyway. I think it's somewhat beneficial to both sides because, you know, you're going to get for Exodus and JCP South Southeast, you're going to get better talent on your shows through the NWA connection. I mean, you just had Billy Corgan come to his show. Uh, Kazana did. And from the standpoint, what the NWA is getting out of this is you sort of have this network of promotions. So you you're, you're able to give your wrestlers more work and, for example, there's an NWA world title match on the last exit of this pro show, you know, that may not have happened otherwise, but now it's an affiliate promotion. Um, is any of this a big deal? Is it going to be a game changer for, for the NWA? No. Do I think it's the worst idea? Not if they keep it under control and it doesn't get out of hand like it did before. And, you know, if they keep it under control and it's limited, I, I think it can be somewhat beneficial to all parties involved. Yeah, so, I, I think right now, it being Midwest and Southeast, like putting that sort of branding on all these promotions, I think is important so far. Now we'll see. <laughs> you know, that that I think was the biggest part about the, like you said, that other era where it was just NWA, you know, I think one of them was, I'm looking through the old list now, and I think my favorite one was NWA Mr. Chainsaw Wrestling. It's like, okay, what the fuck are we doing here? It's like, what? Yeah, Mr. Chainsaw. He's a, yeah, he runs uh, St. Louis area, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was St. Louis or Michigan yeah. or something, whatever it was. But it was just like, Something all right, like where, where, yeah. where the fuck, what, what, what are we doing here? Like, if you're going to well, be. paid the 50 bucks. Right, exactly. you know? and there was a lot of people. That gimmick. By the way, go back and listen to that episode. I don't know if it's even available. We were there for a while because there were so many at a certain point that were just insane. NWA Irish Italian wrestling out of New England. Okay, great. Yeah, <laughs> you know NWA old school wrestling out of Odessa, Texas. Great. Okay, you know like it, it was just they were just piling them on NWA Vendetta Pro Wrestling, NWA Wrestling Revolution, NWA Wrecking Ball Wrestling. Like, what are we doing here? What is this? You know, and it just and waters it down too. Yeah, exactly. And and I think if you can keep it to being regional and it being obvious that that's that region and now you have one midwest and exodus pro represents the midwest and jcp not that jcp this jcp represents the southeast and maybe you you link up someone in the pacific northwest or whatever somebody in the east coast you know like do that and, and keep it to that region and if it's five or six that's fine you know what i mean that is okay i don't think anybody will have a huge issue with that like you said does it help that many people i don't know i mean it's it, it can't hurt i i i think from one standpoint, I think it's going to help. Though it's going to help those companies. The current state of the NWA is going to obviously help Exodus Pro and Joe Kazana Promotions, those sort of things. It, it, it will help a little bit. How much so? I don't know. But it's going to help a little bit. And and on the flip side of that, for the NWA, it lets them look at new talent. It lets them get that name out a little bit. It lets them do more regional stuff. It. it I think it's well, good. Well, here's I mean, what, how I'm looking at it. If you've got the NWA on the CW and we'll see what happens with that, whether it's just going to be streaming or whether they actually get on the network itself. And, you know, there's 300,000 people a week watching the show or whatever. And, and, and you can put the stars from the CW on your indie show. Like you're saying, it can't hurt. I don't know if it'll help or how much it'll help, but you know, for the indie promoter, um, you know, it can't hurt again. And, and, and a link up maybe to some talent, uh, you know, that, that Billy's using, whatever that's worth, whatever some of these um, wrestlers who are working for, you know, again, I, I do, I think it's going to help dramatically any of these promotions or the NWA itself. Probably not, but, um, and we'll see what they do with it. You know, are, are they going to push these shows hard on the, on, on power and, you know, you know, build matches on power because if they do that and, and, and build the matches on power and push them on power, 
if you're an indie promoter, again, that can't, that doesn't hurt you. And it can only help you, you know, to have your shows uh, pushed like that, you know, and, and you know, so uh, not even necessarily just for ticket sales, but if you decide to stream your shows or whatever, maybe get you a couple extra buys, but um, basically this is harmless and you just hope it doesn't get out of control. The one thing that annoys me is now if you go to cage match and go to NWA and click events, it's all mucked up with these indie shows yeah. again and not just the NWA event. And, you know, same thing with the, with people's cage matches, you know, when you're looking at the promotions they've worked, you know, and it's like, uh, so from that standpoint, which is just a, you know, stupid thing that bothers me, uh, that's kind of annoying, but, um, I don't know, you know, Corgan's just throwing things against the wall here and sees what sticks. I saw that they had, they added some episodes of power to this, to the CW, um, I guess, uh, to CW's digital streaming site or whatever. And then everyone's like, like Joe Galley and all these guys are talking shit. Like, oh, do we not have a deal now? Oh, I guess we showed <laughs> right. you. I love the, the the oh, what do we have here? Guess oh, the, I guess you. Oh. I guess the the dirt sheets don't have all the answers. Or whatever. Right. It's like, meanwhile, it's like twelve episodes of Power on uh, the CW and, uh, website. Yeah, you got to go to cw.com/slash/shows right. and scroll down and click NWA to get a couple episodes of, of oh, Power. So great. Yeah. It's why would I go there to watch it when it's all on YouTube? You know, like, <laughs> right. what do you, what kind of own is this? Who are you owning with this? So uh, until, you know, we see you on the CW proper, I, it looks like your deal might've fallen, fallen apart, but. Um, or your you know, deal isn't as good re- as, uh, as, as it once was uh, reported as being. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they've been shooting that reality show for months though. So maybe that will be on the network proper, but um and then who knows? Maybe power will get bumped up when they when they roll. Maybe they're waiting to roll out the reality show to roll power out on the network itself. Uh, you know, the smart money would be on both shows just being on the website, I guess, at this point, the way that it was kind of reported a few weeks ago. Um, but I don't know. You know, we'll see. Um, it was kind of exciting news for them when they initially had the TV deal, but then it all fell apart, whether that's because of NXT or whether that's because of doing Coke on the pay-per-view. Um, I don't know, maybe a combination of both, but that kind of sucks the life out of that story because who knows, they may have been getting an influx of cash that they're not getting now. And um, just the exposure itself would have been, you know, I hate to call it a game changer because that seems strong, but uh, certainly would have elevated it. Certainly more. transformed the so, company. Yeah. Right now they have four episodes of NWA power starting with the, the, September 5th, 2023 episode of Power and ending with the October 24th, 2023 Power. So it's, uh, it's not a lot and it's not current, uh, but sure. Okay. They have eight of them. There's eight episodes up there. They talked all kinds of shit that day, though. When they, when CWTV.com slash shows slash NWA Power. Or if you go to uh, CWTV.com slash shows, uh, don't click on Family Movie Night. That's the first one that comes up, but it's not on Family Movie Night. Uh, it's not on all action, but if you go to Sport, uh, you have Inside the NFL, and there you have NWA Power right next to that. So it is. Uh, it, it got higher on the uh, the pecking order than the Real One Real Ones Canes podcast. I don't know what that is, but sure. Uh, something called When the Game Stands Tall, the LeBron James documentary, More Than a Game, uh, and then Live Golf. It also got uh, above Live Golf, and uh, there you go. Well, great. If you want to see four episodes of Power that were already on YouTube, <laughs> eight, head over eight, to the CW. Eight, eight episodes of Power, uh, the run up until October 25th, and then the end. Samin, Samin. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, Sa-win. right, the go-home show for Sawin. That's weird. Nothing after Sawin, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that yeah. strange? And it no does. Sawin. Yeah, no Sawin on there at all, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the nobody will be able to know the separation of light and darkness or whatever, so. um. Yeah, great. Um, there you go. So that's ML Dub. That's the National Wrestling Alliance. We're also the MLW podcast because nobody else will talk about MLW but us. Thursday night, tomorrow, NW, uh, MLW One Shot 2023 available at voicesofwrestling.com slash fight. Your big time main event, Alex Kane, Bumaye defending the N- MLW World Heavyweight title against Matt Cardona. Yeah. 
Uh, we kind of went over this show. We did. I just realized that last week we did this. Ricky Shane Page versus Jimmy Lloyd for the National Openweight title match. I think I'm going to skip that one, Joe. I'll let you uh, review that one on uh, next week's show. But uh, you know what? Hey, fuck it. I'll watch Jimmy Lloyd versus Ricky Shane Page and bury it like it needs to be buried. Satoshi Kojima versus Tom Lawler. Uh, Miyu Yamashita, the aforementioned. We talked about her from Tokyo Joshi Pro. She'll be facing Delmi Exo uh, for the Princess of Princess title. Uh, she'll be defending it, Miyu. Yeah, she does for that. Uh, MLW Women's World Featherweight title match. Janai Kai versus Maki Ito. Uh, and then Rocky Romero defending the MLW World Middleweight title and the World Historic Welterweight title uh, against Mascara Dorada. So uh, there you go. MLW I hate this show. Not good. I hate it. It looks like shit. Does not look good. Um, Thursday night pay per view. What is this? Survivor Series 87? <laughs> like, what, no, what, what are we doing? This? Thursday night pay per view. Why is this uh, on Thursday? Who wanted this on Thursday? It's uh, this Thursday in Philly, like this Tuesday in Texas. Mm-hmm. We got uh, MLW one shot with some of my least favorite There's wrestlers. A lot on of bad Earth. people on this show. Yeah. Any, any um, show that features Ricky Shane Page, Jimmy Lloyd, and Maki Ito is a pretty. <laughs> Can go fuck itself, yeah. basically. Then you throw in I, yeah. Cardona, you're not helping. Janai Kai, don't yeah. love. Yeah, Satoshi Kojima and Tom Lawler are doing a lot of work in this thing. And Alex, I like Alex Kane, too. So Kane, Kojima, Lawler, uh, and Miyu are, are, are people I all like. And, and obviously Rocky and, and, and Dorada you know, stands for itself. But there's there's some good and there's some real fucking, like, close the blinds type of matches on this show. So, yeah. I it, mean, Rocky and Dorada are going to give 70% effort. Oh, and yeah. And have yeah. if that, a 70, I don't star match. You, I don't know if they're giving you 70, to be honest. And, you know, who knows? Selena De La Renta might get involved because it's fucking MLW. <laughs> it cool. always goes back to Selena De La Renta, yep. <laughs> It'll be like... WCW and Hoovy used the tequila bottle to beat Jushin Liger, you know, or whatever that was. And, um, you know, they'll muck it all up. I think we just did passed the, the right anniversary people? of that. I think that th- this week was the anniversary of that. Where, uh, was that, did I have the right participants? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It was, it was, okay. it was just so. Thunder Liger defending the IWGP, uh, junior heavyweight title against Hoovy, uh, in W in a Russo booked WCW. Hoovy used the tequila bottle on Jushin Liger and won the IWGP junior title. Uh, New Japan uh, did not uh, like that. That's the way that their junior title got switched, and they never recognized the title switch. So, and yeah. basically told WCW to go fuck yourself and stopped using any relationship with WCW. Well, you gotta have characters and stories, Rich. Right, yeah. You have to have. Well, you got Jushin, and stories. bro. Jushin Thunder Liger. Nobody cares. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's a guy. <laughs> looks like a Power Ranger. Who yeah. cares? No story. <laughs> That's right around the time he did uh, an, uh, an observer uh, thing and, and literally said that, like, yeah, with like Dave yeah. and Brian or whatever back in the I, I I don't know I think they were in Yada or something like that or whatever whatever they were doing before yeah. many many years before uh, the actual Wrestling Observer website and he was basically just like nobody cares about the Japanese and the Mexicans, bro. Like, <laughs> I think because he was basically like they don't speak English, how would anybody care? And, and it's like yeah, how could you possibly care? Uh, about professional wrestling uh, on a professional wrestling show. So then he took over WCW, and the company was dead in two years. So, cool. Uh, yeah, so I think we just passed the anniversary of that. So, anyway, uh, Paul Wedding uh, lets us know in the chat room, All Japan Pro Wrestling just announced that Lindemann and Tamura is on that 1231 show. So there we go. That there you stacked go. Yeah. show for All Japan Pro Wrestling. Dan Tamura, El Lindemann, as well as Miyahara. And, Breaking uh, and news Nakajima. on there the There you line. go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Breaking yeah. Absolutely. News. Uh, speaking of breaking news, Joe, uh, did you know that NXT has a premium live event this weekend? Um, well, do, don't stay up for the another... Instagram Action Live, by the way, people. I don't think that's going to happen this week uh, for uh, NXT deadline yeah. with the I being replaced by the number one. Yeah, another depressing segment for us next week when we have to review this oh. awful show that will undoubtedly will be like an 8.97. <laughs> right, you match. can do the annual gimmick now or and, the, the monthly yeah. gimmick where you go, all right, Rich. Roxanne Perez, Keanu James, Steel Cage Match. And we're like, fuck that. Oh, God. And you're like, wait, wait, wait. Here's what Cage Match rated. And then I go, ugh. And then you go 8.42 or whatever. And it's like, oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. You know, they're really trying to make Lexus King a thing. <sighs> and if they succeed with this one, it's over. There's truly no more hope. And it's proof that WWE fans will truly eat up anything that the company serves them, with the exception of top dollar. And I love it so much that they can give these fans of this company quite literally anything. Right. They, they can give up. them Brian Pillman Jr. with a Carlos Boozer beard 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. and, and he's like not good and he wears a headband and I'm not even sure what it's supposed to be, but it's 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 Brian Pillman Jr. and he's not improved at all. And he's still terrible. And and yeah, that is they're giving him a main event push. He's not I don't know if he's in the he's not in the main event here, but he's facing Carmelo Hayes. So So this is the test case. If they get that over, it's proof that anything can get over, but it's amazing. Top dollar could not get over. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> That's pretty amazing. In a company where anything gets over if they just anything they present, people just, you know, oh, they're cooking. This they're you know, this is incredible. Uh, you know, fucking lash legend. You know, look, look look how great top dollar couldn't get over. Twitter wanted that man off their screen as soon as he came on, anytime he was on SmackDown. So we'll see what happens with Lexus King. It seems like WWE fans will just accept anything, though. And these Lexus King promos and, and vignettes, <laughs> they're indescribably bad. They're but... s- terrible. Yeah, you got to watch one. It, it, we're just describing it, and I don't know if we're doing a good enough job describing Watch we, we can't. No, they're indescribably bad. But that's the thing. It does. It, it, how many times have we said this and their fans just lap it up so what the fuck do we know everything they present gets over so here's i will say a little look at the ratings Brian. chart though little look at the ratings chart though says eh, they got that tv deal yeah, and things, have, uh, yeah, things have cooled yeah things well i mean cooled. they stopped putting main roster wrestlers on the show but for this they brought back dom and dragon lee so they put main roster people on it because this is a big, this is de- this is one of their quarterly, whatever, monthly. How often do they do these? Every other month? I think every other month or something. Is. Who cares? Yeah. yeah. But um, Lexus King, if he gets over, forget it. It's over. <laughs> it, it just it really means anything. They'll eat up anything because it's, it's, it's indescribably bad. He's just awful. And Brian Pillman Jr. stinks, and we all know that. He's just he's a total non-entity who wouldn't even have this job if he wasn't who he was. And, you know, so... I don't know. He's wrestling Carmelo Hayes. I'm sure it won't be any good, and I'm sure everyone will say that they're cooking. I I, I don't know. What, what what do you say anymore about this stuff? I know. What do you say? I know. All right. Here's a match for you. Uh, Blair Davenport, <laughs> Fallon Henley, <laughs> Tiffany Stratton, Lash Legend, and Kalani Jordan. Just throw them all in there. Iron Survivor. Iron Survivor, Joe. You remember the uh, you remember the rules of the Iron Survivor? No, and I don't care. No, I'm gonna read them out for you. Remember, remember that ah, <laughs> remember last year they had Shawn Michaels with his, his weird face, yes. and his cowboy hat, get on the screen and go, "All right, that's the Iron Survivor Challenge match." It's very simple. Uh, okay, <clears throat> the rules are: five superstars will compete in this unique 25 minute match as they battle each other and the clock. Two superstars will start the match, and every five minutes, a new superstar will enter the match until all five superstars are in the ring. The goal is to have the most falls when the clock hits 25 minutes. Falls can be won at any time via pinfall submission or disqualification. When a superstar scores a fall, they will earn one point. However, when a superstar loses a fall, that superstar must pay the penalty. They are forced out of the ring and into the penalty box for 90 seconds. What? 90 seconds are out. By the way, these are the same people that are like, dah, dah, I don't understand the round robin. <laughs> Explain the round <laughs> robin to me. You know what I mean? But this they got. HBK they with this. his lazy this eye and his cowboy really head talking yeah. about all this. And they're like, yeah, cook, cook. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so once the 90 seconds are up, the superstar can re-enter the match. The superstar who has scored the most falls when the clock hits 25 minutes will be named the Iron Survivor and become the number one contender for the NXT Championship and the NXT Women's Championship, respectively. Oh. So they did men's and women's last year. Um, yes, they did. And it, they're doing that this it year, sounds too. Like, and they're doing it this year, too. Great. It sounds like something off of the AWA Team Challenge <laughs> It does. You know, yeah, right. That's what it sounds like. You know. Yeah, Blair Davenport, um, Fallon Henley, Tiffany Stratton, Last Legend, and Kalani Jordan. Great. Love it. And and Jake the Milkman Milliman. That's who will be taking part in this <laughs> Iron AWA Team Challenge Series Iron Survivor Challenge match. Uh, they're coming back with a um, men's match, too. Tyler Bate, Dijak, Josh Briggs, Braun Breaker, and Trick Williams. So you have a guaranteed, what, 50 and, minutes and, and, of the, and these and matches. DJ Peterson. DJ yeah. Peterson. <laughs> DJ Peterson will also be there, yes. Right. <laughs> Uh, Steel cage yeah. match. I could actually, I cannot wait for this match. Roxanne Perez versus Kiana James. Now, okay, how bad is this going to be? If every he- quarter Roxanne Perez is brought to a level that she doesn't want to go to and has a plunder match, 
uh, how, when are we going to just say that she's a plunder wrestler at this point? Because every uh, quarter, have, she listen, goes, I can't, you have taken me to a level that even I don't know if I am comfortable with the level that I am on right now. And it's like, oh, but every month this is what happens. Every month it's every a level month, she's not comfortable <laughs> You're facing Blair yes. Davenport. You're facing right. Kiana James in the fucking playground match. You're facing Cora Jade. Like, you're always brought right. to that level. So I don't know if I believe when Roxanne Perez, you, I, I, I'll be honest, my suspension of disbelief, <laughs> Joe, is lost when Roxanne Perez says right. that she is at a level that she she doesn't even believe that she could be at this level or she doesn't even know who the real Roxanne Perez is anymore. I don't believe you, her. I don't believe her. You you are going to see a side of me that you have never seen. No, we saw it last We've month. It we like, saw that side of you. Several times. We, we have seen this side of you, Roxanne Perez. Um, I hope this is escape the cage I've rules. Oh, this question. is going to be so fucking terrible. <laughs> so bad. Well, listen, I have one important question. I know we've been goofing on it, but I have a serious question for you. Yes, please. When it comes to this match. Is this finally the month where she runs the razor? Is Roxanne Perez going to get some color? Yeah, unlike, this, uh, unlike Stan Hansen, matches? unlike Stan Hansen at Ultra Clash, yes, Roxanne Perez is, is, is blading, uh, and, and, and Keanu James might have to lead her through it, uh, a veteran blader, you know right. what I mean? We'll, we'll have to... Yeah, maybe, maybe Keanu will wrap the blade in her wrist. <laughs> and... Right. And, and Roxanne will say, all right, I'm ready, and then you know she'll, she'll run, the, run, run the razor, and, uh, and we'll get some double juice in this match, and, and really, uh, really... Really up the game here in the steel cage uh, here at NXT deadline where the I is replaced with a one. Yeah, she's just uh, the queen of plunder. They should bring in June Kasai next month. <laughs> right. Perez. Yeah, Blood Xmas. He can promote Blood yes. Xmas uh, on this show. And uh, yeah, steel cage, Roxanne Perez. Uh, Kiana James from the Total Absolutely. Mortgage Arena in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Uh, <laughs> yes. Of course. Which is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> because of course that's where it is yes total mortgage arena um, bridgeport connecticut uh nxt north american title dom mysterio versus dragon lee all right yeah that's uh all right and then the nxt title match of course Ilya dragnov defending against who else <laughs> baron corbin <laughs> who else but baron corbin right. of course of course well, you know, you pay you pay eight million dollars to this PC, and you end up with Baron Corbin in a main event of an NXT. So you, right. you end up with Baron Corbin versus Ilya Dragunov, two guys you didn't train. <laughs> you know, two, right. well, I guess you trained Corbin, but Corbin, you know, it's a guy that got demoted and a guy you didn't train, um, and that's what you get for the uh, multi million dollar um, performance center. Which is just cranking out the stars. Absolutely. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't it matter. Doesn't it's going to get an 8.9 on it. cage match. It's going to yeah, cook on matters. Twitter. And yes. uh, yeah, it's going to, it's, it, it, it'll, yeah, it, it's, we're, we're the idiots. And everybody will be tweeting about it all night and watching it and doing reaction shows for it. And we'll, we'll wait till Thursday and go, oh, God, <laughs> bury it to bottom of the well, earth. Lash, and... Lash Legend will do one fancy spot she's been practicing for months with her headgear she did a body slam and, um, this week joe and it was like the <laughs> revelation right that, but she did she'll, all she'll do one fancy body spot slam. and it'll get gift all over the place and then they'll blow a half a dozen other spots in this match that are way over their heads that they can't handle and can't do and uh you know that's usually how these things go but you know the, the one spot that they nail that they've been practicing with their little headgear and their headgear ring is uh is the one that you'll uh that'll be tweeted out with the flames so that that's how these things go um i'm annoyed by this show and it hasn't even started I, <laughs> not I, one I, second of this show has started and and it's already annoying and i'm oh, annoyed by it I, uh, by the way speaking of uh, nxt talent and, and people that uh, rehearse things and aren't very good at wrestling uh jade cargill have you uh seen the the recent um um pr drive that uh, has been going on around uh, jade cargill so we had uh obviously you know at, at one of the the press conferences or, or sorry it's a uh what, what, what are we going to call it a content conference what are we supposed to call these things now because journalism can't be done wow. during them so whatever they're supposed to be called yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah it's, it's uh you know they're not journalism you conferences the, the content creators yes you have to i love the content i love content creators. creators so much so i'm glad they're finally getting an opportunity to create content but uh uh, Wait, they asked, hold on a second aren't aren't we content creators are we uh yeah i guess here? so i guess we are yeah, but we're good content. Yeah, we're good. Right? And we're, we're self-deprecating, not... too. So it works. That's right. We're not these cornball. We're not fucking Steve Fall. Okay? That's that's not what we are. We are uh, we are quality no, content. No, all I players. know is, Joe, you talked yeah. about Leighton Buzzard, and I hadn't watched him. So I put on the Big Japan uh, November 15th match because I got a big Kaiji Tomato versus Leighton Buzzard match. This match rocks. 
Oh, so much go. better than Roxanne Perez and Keanu James, which I haven't seen yet, but I'm positive it's going to be better. Leighton Buzzard. Yeah, I like this. Hold player. on a second. Hold on. Wait a minute. You were presented something you weren't familiar with, so you Googled it, looked it up, and, uh, and saw wild. it for yourself? It's wild. I know. What, what is this? What is this? <laughs> I know. It's unbelievable. That's, that's crazy. See, that's why I said we're better content creators, because I, I hadn't watched a Leighton Buzzard match, and now I'm, I'm watching one. So here you go. Didn't take long either. You said to yourself, huh, you know, I could, I could, I could type this in here, Leighton Buzzard. And I can see what the hell Joe's talking about. And you did it. And look at that. You made yourself a fan. Absolutely. Uh, Gerard. You can insert the bit here if you'd what, like. What about him? The Trollio. Uh-huh. Close to the uh, Emerald Flow show here. Uh, <laughs> Voice Wrestling Podcast Network. Uh, yeah, says, where's this going? I'm confused. It says Amori and Nakajima versus the Saitos is now scheduled for All Japan for Wrestling January 14th. Oh, uh, Nakajima spicy. The... I like that. Oh, okay. Shit. All right. See, here's the thing. We're not, you know, I was going to say we're not in the clear until after New Year Dash. And he's booked after New Year Dash. Are we in the clear? We might be in the clear. I don't know. We might be in the clear. Now, obviously, contract season ends at the end of January. So it's possible that New Japan loses a bunch of guys and has some extra money, you know, set aside so Nakajima can come in in the February or whatever beginning. yeah new beginning or something like that but now. but but I like I like that we're past New Year Dash at least that's a good step that's a good past step. New Year Dash you know it wasn't that long ago we were rooting for people to come into New Japan <laughs> right and now I desperately don't want people to go in and it's like we used to root for people to come into AEW now we root for people to come into AEW just so they don't go to WWE not because we want to see them in AEW Correct. and we used to root for people to come into New Japan but now we're like, no, no, stay in all Japan. Yeah, <laughs> please keep keep it's, the rest it, of the it, wrestling it, business healthy. The rest of the Japanese wrestling right. needs this man not there anymore. So he, he, they they right. need him in the open and not you know with you guys. So cool. Where they'll put him in House of Torture with Ren Narita or something. <laughs> right. So just stay in all Japan. So there you go. So uh, NXT deadline. Oh, what was it? oh Jade Cargo? We were talking about Jade Cargo. Uh, so. Triple H kind of mentioned, like, oh, yeah, she was a little, uh, you know, we, we, we had a raw piece or whatever. Essentially just saying, like, yeah, she fucking sucks. And sort of attributing it to AEW, like, they did not get her ready for the next level or whatever. Yeah. So, and now there's a bunch of, like, whoa, guys, come on. You got to chill out. She can't be ready from day one. It's, Hold on a fucking minute. <laughs> like, wait, 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 yeah, wait. Yeah, you yeah, put yeah, her yeah. on TV. You had her come out of limos and say, we signed Jade Cargill. You had her sitting in thrones. We're not allowed to do the, whoa, guys, it's a, let's calm down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. These things take time. It's like, no, hold on a minute. You didn't have to debut her and talk about how big of a deal she was and have everybody go, oh, my God, day one superstar. Oh, what is AEW doing? She can main event WrestleMania tomorrow. And it's like, how, I, how did how did AEW fumble Jade? Right, they fumbled uh, the bag, fumble and now it's Jade? like now we're like, whoa, hold on, these things take time. People need to you know yeah. learn how to work and stuff. First off, if you can't figure it out with with Jade, and AEW figured it out as much as you can figure it out with Jade, you know what I mean? It, it, it's right. it's. I don't think it's that hard. Like, so what she's going to come back with, or what they're going to end up with, is somebody who's just like everybody else. If if this is what we're truly doing, and she's going in this PC for for months and months and months and months and months. And months She's going to come out exactly like, you know, any of these other random people where, where, where she'll have the same moves and the same, all that sort of stuff. Regardless, it's like you put her on TV. So, no, we're, I'm not listening to that. Even she was like, yeah, you know, I'm in the gym working. It's going to take a little while to get to where I need to be. And it's like, well, why were we coming out of limos and sitting on thrones and, and, and having the PR machine just gush over her? And now we're telling everybody, oh, patience, patience, patience. No, you put her on TV, not me. Right? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, like, so annoyed by this retcon that we're doing where it's like, oh, well, geez, you know, she can't be ready right out the gates. You know, she needs to learn how to work. And, uh, well, then. Well, that's what Levesque, Levesque said at the first. You know, we need, you know, the thing with Jade is, uh, you know, uh, we need Jade to be ready for anything that we throw at her. Right? And um, she just wasn't quite prepared for that when when she got here. Which was a direct shot right. at AEW. I mean, you, you can't have more of a direct shot than that, you know. But that was also him admitting that she stinks. Right. We signed and somebody she, who and stinks. Then, and maybe we, we didn't shot, know we she stinks. We signed stunk, someone who stinks. But now we know not, she stinks. Yes. Right. We, we now know that we cannot put her on TV, you know. And, and they don't want her to do – like, you could put her on NXT. But they, they want – she's main roster. And that would just be admitting – 
a massive L if they start her in NXT, right? They can't start her in NXT. She has to be on the main roster. Joe, right? I'm just going to butt in here. I mean, this Leighton Buzzer Kaiji Tomato match, watch this. Have you seen this match from, from 11 15? Listen, I told you. No, I haven't. Leighton Buzzer's really Fucking good. Fucking rocks, dude. He this. just did a Death Valley driver to Kaiji Tomato on the apron, and I am all in on, on, on Leighton Buzzer. Do Hammerstone. He I'm fucking rocks. You. He's got the he's got the nice little mullet going. He's got his crew of goth guys on the outside. I like this a lot. It's rocks. I all don't right. know his big Japan gimmick, so I, I can't speak to that. Go find the Osprey match. It's a yeah, Rev Pro I guess, match. I guess I got to do that. Go use my Rev Pro account and uh, <laughs> I do go use and, your Rev Pro like, account. <laughs> you do. Yes, I, I really know. look like a real asshole here. Yeah, this is seven ninety nine. Uh... Seven ninety nine, folks. Seven dollars <laughs> and ninety nine cents. And and go watch Leighton Buzzard versus Will Osprey. It was, you know. Um, anyway, Jade stinks, and they they're now admitting she stinks, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It, look, but now it's us. It's us for trying to rush her. <laughs> it's like. No, right. I'm not going to let this happen. I'm not letting this wreck on happen. And I want apologies from all these people that were talking about, oh, he we fumbled the bag. And, oh, they, it, 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 they just handed, handed WWE a fucking superstar, a WrestleMania main eventer. Okay, where are all, where are all of you right now? Where is she? Nah, l- Can't l- find l- him with a search party. We like to say that term. Can't find him. Stop yelling at me. I'm, I agree. You know, I, I, I hear you. Um, you know. Yeah, she's got work to do. Mm-hmm. She's got work to do. You know, she's look, and there's the thing I've said it many times. She's past thirty. How much better do you think she's going to get? Hey, you think that light bulb's going to going to turn on halfway through? You know, her, turn her hip toss now, class, her ninth hip toss class, and go. Wait a minute. Now I get it. I get wrestling now. Thank you. I got nothing against her, and and she'll probably when they put her on TV, they'll present her in such a way. Where she is going to come across like a big star. And oh, their, oh, and their oh, audience sure. will... especially with them, especially with them. What what I worry oh, though is that yeah. they want her to be a certain way already, and I think they already don't get it. You know what I mean? Like I, if they're already, like I I feel like if you can't figure her out at this point, what is five months of being at the PC going to do? Yeah, but it's look, but it's a different company. She's going to come out, and a bunch of pyro is going to go off, and they're going to go. That's yes. Shade Cargill. And, yeah. What a superstar! And then she looks like how she looks, and and she'll be over. And yeah. then yeah, her their audience will eat her up, and you know it, it's not really going to matter at the end of the day because their audience is that. And here's the other thing too. The other thing about it is there's going to be some Cody to it in that because it's seen as someone that they took from the other right, side. Right. Right. Right their audience will be even more eager to make sure that she's over because it's sticking it to the company they don't like because they got this alleged can't miss start. So there's that factor too, you know? Uh, Whereas if she just came in off the street, I'm not saying she wouldn't get over, but it would be a little bit, you know, it wouldn't be quite as easy. Now their audience, like it's like they did with Cody, you know, a lot of Cody's appeal at the start was we got their guy, we got their mascot. And this, you know, and there was, there's a lot, you know, and this is the same thing. We got their undefeated year and a half long TNT champion who was supposed to be their next big thing. We got her now. So there's going to be that aspect to it. She's going to get over. I don't believe she'll ever have like good matches though. That she just is what she is. So um, the question is, do they think, you know, at some point they're going to put her on TV and, you know, I, 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 I can't. But how there is a working standard in that company. Mm -hmm, You know, there is, you know, they have their own house style, but there is a working standard. And they don't like, they don't like the squash match thing either. Like they very rarely in WWE do you get. And and her weakness, she cannot sell. That's one of her major weaknesses. Right, right. You know, and. And And they um, love the baby face coming up and and, and working through uh, and, 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 you know. Starting the match hot, and then the heel works him over, works him over, works him over, works him over, heat, 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 and then the babyface comes back and wins. You know, hits a move and wins the match type of thing. Mm, She's not going to be great for that, so (laughs) I don't know. That's going to be tough, so... I mean, they, it'd be really risky. They'd be changing a lot to ever just go in there and squash people in, 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 in a minute or two, and that's probably the best way to use her, but it's also... That's the best way to use her, but is that what... what, what you know, we saw that, and there wasn't that much money in that, so I don't know. We'll see what ends up happening there. Now, we'll say this. There is this kind of idea or perception that maybe she wasn't trying to get a whole lot better. I heard that she did have her hand up for things like house shows. Mm-hmm. And 
working indie shows and that she wanted to go to Japan. And there was a lot of frustration from her that the company that AEW wasn't helping her facilitate a Japan tour and things like that. And that she did have her hands up for the house shows, but that they didn't want her on the house shows and that she did have her hands up to go work in these. They didn't want her working in these. Now I'm not so sure I'd want her working in these either. I can't really blame them for that. You never know what you're going to get with these indies. You know, I, I remember one time I was on a media call with Juice Robinson for New Japan. And um, I don't remember if it was my question or somebody else's question, but someone asked him about working indies and he cut he cut them off. Oh, he, and, I know he hated them. <laughs> First hand. And, yeah, he, <laughs> he was like, I don't he's like, I don't want to work indies. You know, he's like, uh, um you know, you never know. You, they don't. They got these shitty rings, and uh, you know, you, you, you're, you never know. You could get injured, and you don't know who you're going to be working with. They put you in there with these fucking guys who don't know what they're doing. Like he, he went on this rant. Like I don't want to work indies because it's like, it's a fucking. You, you don't know what you're going to get in terms of a ring, an opponent. So I can understand if AEW didn't want Jade Cargill, who was already a project, isn't exactly Minami Toyota. Going off to fucking BLP or whatever the fuck and working with the ally cat. That doesn't <laughs> right. exactly do anything. That wouldn't excite me much either, you know? to be honest. Yeah. I, it's, I, it's I like, kind of agree. Who fucking needs that? <laughs> right. You know, so, so the indie thing I understand. Yeah. But if she had her hands up for those house shows and you didn't put her on the house shows, that is just egregiously bad. Yeah, that, that's my I mean, yeah. You you know, and and you know, the person I talked to. I, I guess you can say is in the Jade camp, someone that's that was close friends with her. And, um, you know, they claim she had her hands up for the house shows. Now, they only ran, what, six house shows, maybe four or six. They yeah, I forget, two, I forget the exact six. number. Not not many. Point here is, if they ran six, she should have been on all six. And I would have put her on those house shows, and I would have put her in there with pick your veteran, Emmy Sakura, Mercedes Martinez, Serena Deeb, Whoever you prefer, your veteran of choice, okay? And I would have had her have 25-minute matches on those house shows with whoever that was. 25 minutes. There's no cameras. You don't have to worry about retaining her television aura where she's squashing everybody because no one's ever going to see it except the 700 people in fucking Lexington, Kentucky, or wherever the fuck they ran these things. These little podunk towns they ran them in. And... I would have put her in there for 25, 30 minutes against these veteran workers on every single one of those house shows and had her win at the end with the jaded filmed that part and showed it on TV. Right. And said, Oh, Jade Cargill continued her undefeated week, streak in Lexington, Kentucky. Kentucky. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And show her hitting the finisher on Emmy Sakura and then put up the graphic that she's now fucking 74 and oh, or whatever it was. I don't remember what it was. And no one needs to know that the match was 25 minutes long, but she's getting those reps with experienced workers in front of a different kind of crowd and learning some things. So that I would have done. And as for Japan, you know, I don't know why they wouldn't want her to go to maybe because they didn't want her losing. And it's hard to send somebody to stardom and say, Oh, by the way, they yeah, she win can't every lose match. this man. This woman must win right. all the time. And she can't. Yeah. She must be in big prominent spots and winning every time. Thank you. Right. Yeah. shit doesn't so, fly. Basically what, she did was just work out at nightmare factory every day and you know have a four minute match on tv and but anything longer than that wasn't any good no so you know i thought listen it's funny her best matches in that company were her first match and her last match the first match with the tag with cody and Shaq, and the last match to the loss to statlander and everything in between was like i don't know this is all steak no sizzle or all sizzle no steak well, however that fucking works you get the idea. Yeah, gotcha. So, um, but I did want to put that out there, you know, because I think there's a lot of times in wrestling where people just, it's funny, like fans will assume something and it becomes the narrative and no one really knows. And then I'm just having a casual conversation. Someone's like, oh no, she had her, she wanted to do these things. She had her hand raised, you know, and I learned something from that conversation. And I was like, oh, really? Okay. And then I, I, I thought to myself, oh, well, I bought into this narrative that people just created. Because we just assumed. You know, it's like they fire Kevin Sullivan this week. Not the taskmaster. Right. And not the not author. The author. Right. 
the production guy, Kevin Sullivan. They fired this guy. Mike Mansory apparently made the call, backed up by Tony Khan. And um, whatever he was doing in production, post-production, whatever his response was. He, at this point, were, Kevin Sullivan out. was doing post-production. So so all the, yeah, the promo packages and that sort of stuff is what you were looking at. Yeah, and I hear people saying, oh, well, Mike Mansory made that decision. That's a w- guy who came from WWE. Well, I guess Mansory is team wwe and kevin sullivan must have been team pro wrestling and it's funny because we heard from someone who talked to a wrestler who is one million percent team pro wrestling and not team sports entertainment who says that mike mansory is a great addition and tony doesn't listen to him enough and again that runs contrary to the fan narrative Mansory came from WWE, so he must be a sports entertainment guy. He must be a WWE-style production guy. He must be part of the problem. And then we all kind of just accept that. Why? Because it makes sense. Well, and and I will say this, too, because I've been one of the people that have talked about a a lot about that, too, is he came in, and pretty quickly after he came in, the video boards got put up, the LED screens got put up, the show became blue and red, a lot more invisible cameras a lot more people looking at the screens weird a lot of that switched at the beginning of this year and that's when he really started to take power so I don't and know. here's the thing i'm not picking on you what i'm saying is we all fall into this trap right because we all said what did we all say oh jade just doesn't want to get better why wasn't she on the house shows why isn't she ever working indies why doesn't she work dark matches why doesn't she go to japan And then we all just assumed it's because she didn't want to, right? We all fell into that trap. And I think sometimes as fans and even pundits and people like us, we sometimes subconsciously will push forward a narrative when we don't fucking know. We connect dots and we come to reasonable conclusions, right? Like with this Jade thing. Especially ones that help us with whatever we're, whatever, whatever our narrative we're, is. Whatever yeah. we like. Right. Whatever idea we're pushing. And I'm not even saying it's on purpose. It's subconscious because in our minds, it's like, oh, well, it makes sense that, that Jade didn't want to do these things because she wasn't doing them and she didn't come from pro wrestling. So we kind of just connected all these dots. And then as it turns out, I'm having a totally unrelated conversation. It gets mentioned in passing. And then the person's like, well, what are you talking about? Jade wanted to do all these things. And then I got, I learned something. So I think sometimes as fans, we need to be careful with what we just assume. Right. So, you know, w- without any kind of evidence other than reaching a reasonable conclusion based on prior information, or again, like you said, what we want to think. So that's all I wanted to say. You know, I'm not trying to call out anyone who said Jay didn't have a work ethic. We came on here and said, why wasn't she doing that shit? I'm not calling out anyone who wants to blame Mike Mansory. Maybe Mike Mansory is responsible for a lot of that bad production you're pointing out. And maybe this main event wrestler in AEW who's a fan of him is a fan of him for other reasons or something. But the the, the, the idea here is sometimes we just... We assume things, we push them forward, and everybody collectively just kind of accepts it. You know, so sometimes these things can be a little eye-opening. That's all. Absolutely. Uh, so before we, uh, we we go here, a uh, quick little stuff about the AEW attendance uh, in Montreal as well as the all-in uh, today. By the way, find another show this week uh, that's going to be listened by this many people that ends with WWE and AEW and begins with All Japan <laughs> and Blood Xmas and uh, Big Japan and all that sort of stuff. Find one that, that, that fits AEW and WWE into the last two segments of their three-hour-plus show. AEW attendance issues in Montreal. So they're having a little bit of a rough week, but I think they got things a little on track here with Dynamite. So they taped a Collision episode on Tuesday. A little weird. So they taped an episode of, uh, of Collision on Tuesday. It was going to air on Saturday, obviously. Uh, final ticket distribution number per WrestleTix uh, was 2,852 for that. Uh, they had set up the building for 5,504. Now, this is the Bell Center in Montreal where the Canadians play big time, big time building. So, set up for 5,000, a little, little under uh, 5,500. They got 2,852. Now, Dynamite did fare a little bit better. Now, this is uh, updated of, as of five hours ago uh, from Russell Ticks. Uh, they were able to get to 5,213 for the show. 
uh, at the Bell Center with a setup of 6,207. So not not bad. There was about 1,000 tickets still left out there. But uh, that, that, that looked good. I watched it on TV. It, it looked like it got. So that ended up being okay. There was a little bit of worry about that a couple weeks ago, but it looks like the Copeland Christian thing, uh, some ticket things. I think they were doing a buy two or buy three, get one or whatever. Whatever they had to do, they got people in the building, and they got over 5,000. So you can't get too upset about that. Now, would I book a, a 25,000-seat arena and then put 5,000 people in there? Yeah, maybe not, but that's what they're doing these days. So that's that's just what it is. So um, Look, I'm not going to shit. That, that's a good modern number for Dynamite yeah. for what they're doing these days. But I'm not throwing a parade for that. There was a time not that long ago where this company – would go into a major market. This is the first time in Montreal, historic... by the way. First time here. Yeah, go into a major market for the first time, a historically great wrestling market, by the way, and run back-to-back shows and do big attendance both nights. There was a time they could do that, and there was a time they were doing that. And now, where the company is now with their tickets, with their ticket business, is one night, you got to paper it up to about 2,800 people. And the second night you do 50, 50 what would you say? 5,800. Uh, they, the final per Russell ticks was 5,200. And the second night you're doing 5,200 and throwing a party. This is, this is where the bar is now. The bar is now terrible on one night. One of the worst gates they're going to draw all year. And then they do an okay number the next night, 5,200, and we're throwing a party. And I am sorry, I'm not going to participate in that party. Because there was a time they'd enter a new market like this, a strong wrestling market, and crush it both nights. Shit. They had Chicago where they'd run three shows, right? Where they'd run the pay-per-view yep. and the TV around the they pay-per-view. Would do, they would do a Dynamite, a Rampage, uh, and then a pay-per-view. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and do great business for all three. And those days, that's what's long gone. Now, now, look, I get it. You can't just – you got to build and all those things. But, um, you know, that number for the collision taping was awful. That's an embarrassing number. And that and that's not even tickets sold. Like all these other towns, I'm sure it was heavily papered to oh, get to 20. Yeah, and, and they had to do a bunch of freebies, and, and people were saying that they were getting free tickets and, and – buy three get one freeze and a lot of stuff it, it, it was and and now we've we've also established and 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 you know this has been going on for a little bit but now it's very very well established and and you know i i learned my lesson and i will never do this again but buy a tickets day of buy it at the last yeah. minute you're gonna get the best deals there's That's no it. point when the tickets go on sale there is zero you're a fucking mark if you're you buy fool. tickets right away you're a fool i was a fool i waited the dynamite got announced for before thanksgiving the you know the Thanksgiving Eve or whatever. I waited until two weeks before the show and said, you know what, we're pro- I, at this point nothing's happening. I'll buy those tickets. And three hours later, four hours later, I got to buy one going free ticket in my email. And I was like, well, fuck, and, I already bought these, so now I'm fucked. Yeah, so. and, and the thing is, look, if it's not a pay per view, you're in no danger of getting shut no, out no, of the no. building. Yeah, I, I, I used to the buy them day. right away because I wanted to be there. When I bought my Revolution tickets, it was like the second they went on ticket on sale, we had to buy them because we wanted to be there right. in that building. That is not the case anymore. You could buy tickets whenever, and you will get into the building. Yeah, their their ticket business for their whatever you want to call them TV tapings or house shows, however you want to term it. Yeah, you have no problem getting in these buildings if you wait if you walk up. You know, you probably get a great deal and you could bring a friend for nothing. Okay. Pay-per-view, their pay-per-view business is still strong. Both ticket sales with the exception of Seattle. And I really think Seattle was an issue of people didn't know what the fuck Wrestle Dream was going to be. It's a new pay-per-view concept. It had a weird, it didn't have a main event. That show didn't have a main event. Okay. And it, it, it had this weird, Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr., which was a nerd main event, but it didn't mean anything to their television. It was a weird show. No one knew what it was. Next year, people will know what Wrestle Dream is, and I think wherever they are, it'll do fine. But for the most part, the pay-per-view business is strong at the gate and on pay-per-view, and the regular house show business is not strong. And something none of us have brought up, and I think the answer is obvious as to why, well, what's the difference between the pay-per-views and the TVs? People know the pay-per-views are going to be good to great, and it's just going to be great wrestling. That's why the pay-per-view business has remained strong. And isn't that a gigantic fucking clue what they're doing wrong with the TV? (laughs) One facet of your business is not doing well and doing worse than it was year over year since the second quarter. 
who started rallying against this stuff in the second quarter. I don't know. Maybe a smart guy that's talking to you right now. And one facet of your business remains strong. The one that's still presenting the great wrestling that was the trademark of the company from the beginning. So, I mean, it seems obvious to me what the problem is with the TV. First of all, you don't know who the fuck is going to be there on a week-in, week-out basis. That's number one. There's a few names that you can be pretty certain are going to be there. Is Kenny Omega going to be there? I don't know. Is the Young Bucks going to be? I don't know. Probably not. But <laughs> How about Hangman Page? Is he going to be there 20% of the time? How about MJF? Well, most of the time, but it's not a guarantee. Never on collision. You just don't know who the fuck is going to be on these shows. You know? Uh, Danielson, is he going to wrestle on these shows? Ah, sometimes, if he hasn't gotten hurt in the last week. Moxley, a eh, good chance he'll, but you just don't know. Right, right. And, and like I was mentioned too, you know, I, I understand why they're running these bigger buildings, but it, it speaks to the point that we talked about a, a little bit earlier, is that you, there is no danger of you being shut out. You know what I mean? Like you, They're running these gigantic basketball arenas, these 20,000. There is no need to buy your tickets right away. There's no need to buy full price for your tickets, because you know goddamn well that if you pay X amount of dollars, you are going to be able to get into that big building, because they're going to have half of that big building still open for you at any point. You know what I mean? There's always going to be a thousand tickets still available, 2000 tickets still available, 3000 tickets still available, five, all that sort of stuff. There's going to be so, so much, uh, you know, that, 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 and, and I think that hurts a little bit. I think that I understand why they run the big buildings. It gives you prestige and all this sort of stuff, but I don't know, man, it makes it less important to buy tickets at full price. And I think that they're, you know, it makes it less important to buy full, to buy tickets. And once you get out of that habit, once you get out of that habit, and I guess it speaks to your TV point too. Once you got out of the habit of watching the TV every week, once you got out of the habit of buying tickets to the, the the shows when they're coming to your town, once you get out of that habit, it is very, very hard in pro wrestling to get back in the habit that every single time Dynamite comes, I'm just going to buy a ticket, whatever, because Dynamite's going to be great. Now you wait. You see, okay, yeah, I'm getting to buy three, get one, or uh, tickets are 10 bucks, or hell, I got free tickets, great. I'll go and watch this th- this thing or whatever. But there's less of this. You know, you, now it's even harder. It, 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 there's going to take more work to draw people to the building now than before where you had built up enough equity and enough trust that, hey, AEW's coming to town on this date at this arena, buy tickets so you're there. And most people said, fuck, yeah, I better buy tickets so I'm there. And now it's like, nah, I'll wait and see. And even if all the big stars aren't there, I'm going to get a great show. Right, right. Now it's, I don't know now if I'm going to get a great show, staying... who's on the show, and That's what right. ticket deal can I get. So there is no reason to buy these tickets until the day, a day or two before, because it's like, all right, uh, this guy and this guy are going to have a match. That sounds pretty good. Uh, oh, here, cool. I can get a ticket for five bucks. Cool. I'm in. You know, th- th- that's, there's no reason to buy tickets two months, three months, four months ahead of time. Buy it a day ahead of time. Uh, and uh, five hours ahead of time, if you really want to wait for them to on Twitter to announce the rest of the card, you know, on, on Twitter, you know, eight hours before the show goes live and then you can buy your tickets. And I think there's a gigantic chunk of the audience that simply does not want to watch MJF talk to Adam Cole on a video screen on a video screen. Uh, Joe, I'm going to tell you something happens on this week's dynamite that I think is going to make you very, very, very happy. There's, uh, it's course, not all good, right. but something happens. And, uh, I think the room, there was a while where the room wasn't listening too often, but I wonder if the room might be listening again because something happens and it's, it's very, very, very reminiscent of something you and I have both talked about that you very specifically talked about uh, on your last Thursday dynamite review. So show don't tell they've been saying they're going to revert back. Well, restore the feeling. Show me. Don't tell me. But I think there's a certain segment of the audience that doesn't want to watch a big screen and have a guy talking on the screen on a big screen or, or watch this well, MJF grab ass shit. Stuff sucks. And that's why I stopped going to WWE tapings many, 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 many years that's ago. Right. There was a while where I, I remember I went to one show and it was like half the time we were sitting looking at the screen. I'm like, why am I doing this? I'm going to go home and watch this for no dollars. And if I really want to watch that, I could, I'm sitting here watching a screen. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> Paying this money. And it took me an hour to get out of the parking lot. And I was like, never again. I'm never going to TV taping from WWE ever again. I never did. I've never been back to a TV taping for WWE since that point. So anyway, that's a um, little note on the uh, AEW tickets. We put it on the back of the show. Some people complain. They don't want to hear the same conversations every week. Yeah. The bottom line is I have to talk about what the company gives me. I, I don't know what you want me to do about it. I, I You know, when it comes to some of these topics, you know, I go through the same thing with the TV reviews. I have to review what I am given. Don't blame me. If my reviews are repetitive or you don't like the message that it's on the company to change and be better. If you want a more positive review. So, um, I don't know. What am I supposed to do? Just, you know, 
you know, it's the same thing here, you know, so now it's on the back end of the show. So, you know, you're an hour three. If you didn't want to hear the, the AW ticket talk, fucking close the file. You probably didn't miss much. I don't even know what we're doing. Do we have anything after this? I think no, we're, we're, even, done. I think we're I, done. Real quick, positive for AW all in uh, seems to be selling very, very well so far. Uh, Russell takes update well, from that's the point I was just making. Go ahead. Yeah. From yesterday, uh, tickets distributed number up to thirty six thousand three hundred and thirty two. Uh, it's set up right now for just under 50,000 at 49,000. They're very easily going to get to 40,000 and 50,000, not out of the realm of possibility. And that fits right where you and I kind of talked about. It. I think you and I, I think I went 50 to 60 was my range. I, I forget where you were, but I think we can very, very comfortably get that. We're, we're, we're minimum, months, minimum. months away from the show and we're already almost at 40,000. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think doing 80 again is impossible. I don't at the rate we're going without any matches or bookings or anything. Yeah. And, and, and now maybe you start discounting, you know, you start naming people soon. You start maybe doing some discount. I mean, they have eight months to kind of play around with this and they're already at almost yeah. 40. So yeah, I, I, 80 seems wild. That seems tough, but I, I, let me I, be clear. I'm not predicting it. Yeah, I'm but it's not it's out not of the realm of possibility. It is certainly not out of the realm of possibility at all. I mean, if they were sitting at 18,000 right now, you go, Oh, okay. Well, right. <laughs> then there's do, no chance they're getting there, but yeah, they're, they're going to do 35,000, you know, but, they're going to easily clear 40. I think 50 is a lock. We said 40 was a lock last week. I think 50 is now a lock. Oh, 40, 40. Yeah, they're, they're getting a 40. That That, that is not even we're, a lock. We're not way even, past that. We're not even lock. We're, we're past that. They're, they're going to get way past that. 40 now. I mean, right. but 50, 50, I think, is a lock. They're going to do 50. A- anything after that, we'll see. You know, um, maybe if ticket sales slow to a trickle now and it becomes, okay, well, now we have to see what happens in the build, you know, you know, but but I, I think that I, I'd be comfortable guaranteeing that they, there's 50,000 people in the building yeah. if they're at 38,000 now. So there you go. That is the uh, all in update. And that is a W and that is the flagship. So uh, thank you guys, of course, for listening. Thank you for uh, obviously sticking with us for the few technical difficulties we had at the uh, early part of the show. But hey. The live listeners, you heard that, but uh, you guys listening at home, you're going to think it was seamless. You're going to hear none of that stuff. It's going to be perfect for you guys. But uh, anyway, uh, flagshippatreon.com, $5 tier to get uh, new episodes of Jovember to remember Brett versus Owen, all of our archive of years and years and years uh, of retro and bonus content available there for $5. Uh, subscribe to the $10 tier to get our live shows as well as all of our written content, uh, including Instant Reaction Live for AW World's End coming up later this month. Uh, of course, voicesofwrestling.com slash flagship merch. You can get your official The Notebook notebook in time for 2024. Uh, that is available, again, at voicesofwrestling.com slash flagship merch. Uh, of course, uh, thank you to our sponsor, Magic Mind, magicmind.com slash flagship. Again, it's magicmind.com slash flagship. Make sure you use that promo code flagship20 when you check out. And, uh, yeah, voicesofwrestling.com for previews and reviews and columns and all that other good stuff, voicesofwrestling.com slash discord. And uh, look for us on YouTube as well. So that is it. So that is Joe Lanza. I'm Rich. We'll talk to you next time on the Flagship Podcast. Take care. Do you like wrestling trivia? Then check out the five-star match game, the Pro Wrestling Quiz Show. I'm Joe Gagne, and every episode, I grill three contestants with five rounds of power-packed wrestling trivia. We have over 30 evergreen episodes in the archives covering WWE, AEW, Japan, Mexico, and much, 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 much more. Play along at home and check it out today.